Well, guilt is guilt, whether it's sweet or bittersweet. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. And so it's not a very positive thing to be guilted into something, right? Um, I don't know. Pardon? Um, I kind of felt good when he was doing it. <laughs> Hello YouTube and Odyssey. Hi y'all. Uh, welcome to part 28 of our Jodi Arias The Wicked Witch of the Weird series. Yeah, I can't wait to get into this one. Me neither, no. Um, but first of all, we just want to say a huge thank you to our viewers, to our subscribers, um, to our family that we've built up on coffee and youtube um for making it possible for us to get our lives back and continue our series yeah we very very much appreciate it thank you all so much for those of you that don't know um to cut a very long story short we had a um pest infestation that got very very bad uh, we had bed bugs we had to tear out all of our furniture carpets everything get rid of everything um, we had no idea how we were going to do it financially or practically. Uh, you guys on YouTube, you know, just basically answered our prayers and you um, helped us out. We really do appreciate it. We're going to make a video soon. Once we get everything back, we're going to take you through everything that we've replaced and what you helped us get back. So thank you. Thank you very much, all. So part 28. This is day 24 of Jody's trial. Uh, once again, it's, I think it's day four of the cross-examination. Yeah, it is. Um, and Juan Martinez is leading up to the murder of Travis, but he's just, I think he's going to concentrate more on the events leading up to that kind of her journey from, um, you know, Wairika over to Mesa. Yeah. So this is going to be really, really interesting. Um, just our, our usual disclaimers, uh, we're watching this trial through for the first time. Uh, we do speak our minds. Some of you may find us very puerile. Um, we offer our honest opinions and we will be stopping this to um, provide our commentary as usual. If you'd like to watch the original video, we will leave a link without our commentary to the original video in the description. Also, we're not professionals. We don't say we are. We don't have any training or expertise. We're just two ordinary people who just say what we see. Yeah, and we speak our minds and we, well, from what our subscribers and viewers say, we, we, we say what they're thinking. So um, sit back, get yourself whatever refreshments you like, because this is going to be around about a five hour video, isn't it? Yeah, it's a long one. It's going to be a long one. A very long one. So, um, that's what she said. <laughs> join us as we delve into part 28, day 24 of the trial, and we'll see you on the other side. Ms. Arias, please take the stand. Please be seated. The record will show the presence of the jury. The defendant and all counsel, Mr. Martinez, you may continue with cross-examination. Ma'am, yesterday you told us that um, after your experience or your time in Ehrenberg with uh, Mr. Alexander that uh, you felt like a prostitute, right? Yes. Yeah, Ehrenberg. Do you remember that place? Yeah, the dirty weekend capital of the West, according to Jody. But uh, you've made other statements with regard to your experiences in Ehrenberg, haven't you? Yes. Let's take a look at uh, an exhibit, which is exhibit number. Get that from the park.
is Exhibit 490, which comes from your conversation, an excerpt from your conversation on May 10th of 2008 with Mr. Alexander. Let's listen to it and see if that's your voice, and then uh, we'll move it in. Okay, well, you just keep spreading it on as you need it, and you keep sliding around. <laughs> Remember the first time that you and I grinded um, at, at Ehrenberg, and we both, like, I ended up just coming, and you're like, whoa, I came. You came at the same time. I looked around, and there's just jizz, like, all over. It was so hot. <laughs> we came together. That was so cool. Yeah. Ever think about that when you drive through there. Oh yeah, always. So do I. Ma'am, that's your voice on there, right? Yes. And that's you and Mr. Alexander discussing what uh, may have happened in Ehrenberg, correct? Yes. What did and, happen? Pardon? What did happen? What uh, happened in Ehrenberg, then, right? Yes. And you were talking in very fond tones uh, about that experience in this uh, clip that we just played, weren't you? Yes. And it was because it was fun, right? Yes. And it was something that you enjoyed, right? Yes. In other words, Jody loves a spur of hot sauce on her mouth. Oh, absolutely. She and, I'm, does. and I'm not talking about Mexican hot sauce either, or curries. So when you tell us that you felt like a prostitute, it really does, it seems to be contradicted by, what, by what's on Exhibit 490, right? Not if you understand why I said that. Well, you do enjoy your, you do say that you enjoy the visit to Ehrenberg, correct? Yes. You do enjoy the sex in Ehrenberg, correct? Yes. I move for the admission of Exhibit 490. Objection. 490 is admitted. Conversation involving Ehrenberg with uh, people from 48 Hours, right? Yes. Let me have that marked as an exhibit. I'm willing to bet that whenever she feels nauseous and she throws up, it's, you know, part diced carrot and part semen. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me considering what she might have, have in her stomach. Yeah, and the amount of load she's taken. No additional objection, Your Honor. 491 is admitted. Was it that was special about him? He, um, he really was an amazing person to know. Um, he was generous, um, one of the most generous people that I've ever encountered. Um, we would, there was one point where we were um, in Ehrenberg, I think that's Arizona, it's right on the border of Arizona or California, it's Ehrenberg, and um, we were driving up, we were hitting the freeway to go to a movie theater, and we stopped at the stop sign to get onto the freeway, and there was a lady there holding a sign. I don't remember if it said, we'll work for food or hungry or God bless or something like that. But either way, he pulled over. We were in his BMW, rolled down the window, and he said, are you hungry? And she said, yeah. And so with that, he turns around and we go to Wendy's and we get the triple decker that Wendy sells and the biggie fries and the biggest drink that you could get. And uh, we drove back and gave it to her and she was really grateful. And um, she just went over and sat down away from the freeway and started eating and had dinner that night. So just little examples like that. That's just one of so many um, that, that people could tell you about his generosity. So um, there were so many attractive qualities about him. He, he was very kind. Um, when I moved to Mesa originally, I downsized from a house to a room. 
and I didn't have a place to put my art. I didn't have a place to put um, my books and some of the things that were really precious to me. So um, he allowed me to use, he had so much storage available in his home, so he allowed me to use a lot of that storage to put things in his home, in his garage, or in his closet, in his office, and things like that. So um, just, and it wasn't even a question. He was just like, put it at my house, you know? It wasn't like he was doing me this big favor. It was just like, of course, you know, I think twice about it. So he never, he never was showy about how generous he was. He was just, it just was like second nature to him. I wonder, are, are we the only ones who find it offensive that she is sat there in a prison uniform, you know, basically being charged with his murder, being interviewed about his murder, and she's speaking in such glowing terms about him? Is, is anyone else offended by that or finds that really you know, unpalatable. Of course it is. I mean, God, I do hate that bitch. Well, you know, I can understand that and I can understand those sentiments, but every time she has that horrible smile on her face and she starts talking about him in such glowing terms, I can well believe that some of the stuff that she says about him is true. It's certainly what we've just heard, but... The fact that she does it with this smile, knowing that she brutally murdered him, I find it just reprehensible. I don't know about you. Oh, yeah. Ma'am, when uh, you first described this visit to Ehrenberg, you told us something that was a little bit different than what we heard right now, right? Yes, according to the questions I was asked. Well, yes or no? Yes. And you told us about going to Sizzler, right? Yes. You told us about him grabbing your rear end, right? Yes. Keep cold, ain't got hands that big. You told us about the sexual encounters, right? Yes. You told us that really wasn't a romantic weekend at all. No, it wasn't. And in fact, it, the uh, indication from you, from the witness stand, was that this was a pretty bad weekend all the way around, wasn't it? No, I didn't say that. Well, your indication was that all he wanted was sex, right? Um, it seemed that way. Well, if it seemed that way, that was your belief, right? Not at the time, but in retrospect, yes. So, as you said here today, it is, it looked like, or not looked like, all he wanted was sex, right? Mostly. Well, all, is it yes mostly. or no? Mostly. And uh, when you got there, according to you, that's the first thing that happened, right? Yes. And then you guys uh, sat around at some point and started to look at TV, or watch TV, correct? Yes. And at some point you went out to dinner, right? Um, yes. And at another point, you went to the movies, right? Yes. And you indicated that, well, to you, that was the way you said it. It wasn't a very romantic weekend, right? Not overly romantic. In fact, there wasn't really any romance. Ma'am, I'm not asking you to embellish right now. I'm asking you whether or not you told us before that it was not a romantic weekend. That's what you said on direct, correct? Yes. And you didn't tell us about this circumstance where he stopped and he gave this woman uh, this burger from Wendy's either, did you? No. It appears that there are two sides to what went on in Ehrenberg, doesn't it? No. Well, it appears that there's the side that you we just heard from where you enjoyed the sex, right? Yes. A side where um, you and he were driving around, correct? Yes. And he helped some homeless person, right? I think she was homeless. Well, it's somebody that was standing there at the side of the road, right? Yes. At, or And with some sort of sign. And it looks like this is based on what we heard from the previous uh, excerpt, it looks like you were sort of reminiscing back on uh, May 10th of 2008, reminiscing in a very positive fashion, right? May 10th, 2008? Oh, yes. I That's the phone call that we just listened to prior to this. Yes. And it looked like you were reminiscing in a very positive fashion, right? Yes. When she talks about, you know, this time that her and Travis had in Ehrenberg, it kind of reminds me of our trip to Amsterdam. Do you remember? I remember that. Yeah. Um, we had a really good time. You know, we went, we took it in, saw the sights. We had a good time. Lots of sex, wasn't there? Oh, yeah. We yeah. had a blast. It was great. Um, when we reminisce about it, we do it with, you know, good memories. I don't think we had any bad memories on that trip, did we? Not one. But to listen to her talk about her trip to Ehrenberg, certainly in her testimony to Nermi earlier on in the trial, you think that it was living hell. You think that she was like being tortured or being held there against her will. She and yeah. being forced into things. Yeah, she seemed miserable, and she seemed as though she was there just to please him. That phone call, that that phone call, just blew all of that out of the water, didn't it? Well, you could see 
how happy she was. Yeah. And she sounded so jolly. Yeah, and it sounds as though she had a smile on her face when she was reminiscing the reminiscence. So Absolutely. I just love it when she shoots herself in the foot with her own words. That is poetic justice, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Not the same picture that you presented previously with regard to the Ehrenberg uh, meeting, correct? I was asked about a different time frame. Ma'am. So then that would be correct. So the answer is that is correct. Then, yes. Right? One of the other things that um, was presented in this case was that it appeared that Mr. Alexander, from what you presented, was an individual that was um, totally into sex, correct? Yes. But, and that's when he was with you, correct? Um, me and other girls. Well. <coughs> Had you ever been in a bedroom with him and another girl? Yes. And the three of you had sex? No. So when you say that he had sex with other women, you really don't know if that's true or not, do you? If he was telling you the truth, then it's true. Well, ma'am, I'm not asking you what he told you. I'm asking from your personal experience. In terms of the situations that you know about, you don't really know of any other circumstances where he had sex with anybody else, right? I do know. What's the bet she was there with the binoculars? Yeah, I'm surprised she didn't record it. Yeah, peeking in the window, watching him do the horizontal hokey cokey. And you're talking because you were there and you were watching his penis go inside them. Is that what you're saying? No. You're just telling us that because of some conversations that you may have had with somebody else, correct? Um, him. Other people, right? Um, just one person. And as we know, people don't lie, do they? That's not necessarily true. Well, no, people don't lie. That's what you're telling us right now. Because you're saying that somebody told me that it must be true. Here. I said if. Ma'am, you're saying that it's based on what somebody told you, right? Based on what Travis told me, yes. And people have a tendency to embellish things sometimes, don't they? Yes. Just like you in this case, correct? Um, not on the stand, but in this case, yes. Yeah, and on the stand too. Plenty of times, the insufferable succubus. Haven't you lied from the very start of this case until, according to you, you got on the witness stand? No. Well, you're saying that you're not lying here, that what you're telling us is the truth, right? Yes. And this is an apple. But you are telling us that when you spoke with the detective that that wasn't true correct whatever it is that you told him well anything some things were not true most things most things were true is that what you're saying some things were not true did you lie to the detective yes or no? yes and did you lie to him on two occasions more than two yes well i'm talking about two dates did you lie to yes. him on two dates and did you also lie to 48 hours yes did you lie to people in utah yes did you lie to daniel freeman yes everyone Right, so you lied to a lot of people, but you're saying that just because you are sitting here in this courtroom, there has been, for lack of a better term, a conversion, and you're now telling the truth, right? For lack of a better term, yes. It's a full of shit. And um, the same thing with regard to whatever Mr. Alexander tells you, everything that he says, you believe, right? Um, not necessarily. Well, but, but you do believe the part about the sexual encounters, right? Yes. Did you ever talk to the women that were involved to confirm it? Um, no. So, you don't have any confirmation from these women as to whether or not it happened, right? No. And it appears, however, though, that this sexual interest that he had was directed towards you, wasn't it? Some of it. No, most of it. Or all, all of it. Wasn't it directed towards you? Um... Not all of it, some of it, most of it, I don't know. Maybe during the time we were together, most of it, I don't well, know. Well, let's take a look at it and see what uh, was said during May 10th of uh, 2008 about that. And I'll ask you after I play it to see whether or not that is your voice and whether it is part of the previous clip that we played. Yes, it is. Be moved to be admitted before it's published. I have now moved for the admission of 492. No objection. 492 is admitted. Okay. 
Yeah, you are right, though, that in the bath. Oh, God. Oh, when we took a bath together? Uh-huh. That was, that was surreal, like, honestly. And I think, I mean, maybe the candlelight and the bubbles all had something to do with it, but you were amazing. You made me, seriously, you made me feel like a goddess. Like, I wasn't saying you were, like, worshiping me, but you were, you made me feel like I was the most freaking beautiful woman on the whole planet. Like, I, I so felt like I was the goddess. <laughs> and so, aside from all those warm, fuzzy feelings, but, like, it, it was it was so sexy, and it was so hot, and, oh, gosh. It seems as though around our videos and our channel, there has uh, sprung up a drinking game. So when Nermi, for example, talks about penile vaginal intercourse, you take a, a shot, you know, or I think if we asked everyone to take a shot after every time Martina said, right, everybody would be pissed within about like three minutes, wouldn't they? Yeah, exactly. But I've got a feeling that she's going to explain this away by saying I was making him feel better or trying to make him feel good. If she does, take a shot. Yeah. Hard to make you feel that way because you were freaking. You, you were hot. You, you were. You are serious, but honey, I don't want to force you right now because uh, I'm touching yourself. I am already. <laughs> Did she say, I am already or I am horny? Sounded to me like horny. Yeah, at first I thought she said, I am Hardy, in which case I was going to say, nice to meet you, I'm Laurel. <laughs> I just started. <sighs> I wish those were my hands, giving you a hand job. Honey, so, you know, like, before I met you, I never checked off. Like, once I started, once uh, I started meeting you, I don't know, once a month, once every two weeks. Like, since you've left, I check out every day, sometimes two, three times a day. Are you serious? I don't know. Well, it's always just a fucking yeah. Oh, my God, I'm here right now. I wish you were here. I swear, if we have to sit through this fake orgasm once more, I'm going to insert a pair of calipers into my own arsehole and I push very hard. I bloody hope not. Me too. If you were here, my grandparents were asleep, I'd let you ride in my bedroom. We'd shut them with the door and we would just have a big fuck fest. We'd go at it all night. That is your voice, right? Yes. And that's him telling you that in terms of his sexual activity, masturbation specifically, he didn't masturbate um, before he met you, right? No, he didn't say that. He said he hardly ever did. Previously on the Wicked Witch of the Weird. Honey, so you know, like, before I met you, I never checked off. Well, man, perhaps, uh, we should listen to it again so we can hear. And you're saying that he's not saying, I don't know. Uh, before I met you, I never jacked off. I want you to take a listen to that. Oh, when we took a bath together? Uh -huh. That was, that was surreal, like honestly. And I think, I mean, maybe the candlelight and the bubbles all had something to do with it, but you were amazing. You made me, seriously, you made me feel like a goddess. Like, I wasn't saying you were like worshiping me, but you were, you made me feel like I was the most freaking beautiful woman on the whole planet. Like, I, I so felt like I was the goddess. <laughs> I can't believe she said he made her feel like a goddess. Didn't she say earlier that he made her feel uncomfortable? Yeah, she did. Said that she felt uncomfortable on that trip. Once again, her own words defeating her. But the word goddess, I mean, she's not Princess Diana. She's not the goddess Diana. She's certainly not Marilyn Monroe. All she is is a stupid swamp donkey with the arse end of a tractor for her nose. And so, 
aside from all those warm, fuzzy feelings, but like it, it was, it was so sexy and it was so hot and oh gosh. Oh, that was that hard to make you feel that way because you were freaking, you, you were hot. It, it, you, you were, you are serious, but honey, I don't want to force you right now for that because I'm touching yourself. I am already. <laughs> There's another nice mess you've gotten me into. I just started. I wish those were my hands, giving you a hand job. Honey, so you know, like, before I met you, I never jacked off. Did you hear that? Yes. He said, honey, before I met you, I never jacked off, right? Yes. And you have no reason to doubt that, do you? I have plenty of reason to doubt that. She's cherry picking again. She believes him about the sexual partners that Travis had, but somehow she doesn't believe him the fact that he, he never had a wank before he met her. Nope. But then again, she plays dumb. She is dumb. Yes, I do have reason to doubt that. And uh, you're basing your previous statements to us about him being with other women on what he told you, right? Um, yes. And yet, we have him here via this uh, technical medium telling us that he never jacked off before he met you. Isn't that what he's saying? Yes. And so what you're saying is that, well, I'll believe him when it's to my benefit, but I won't believe him when it's not. Yes, in this contrast is a testimony we're talking about apples and oranges, sex versus masturbation. Overruled, you may answer the question. Um, I don't know because I don't think that's to my benefit or not either way. Well, what you're saying to me is I'll believe him when he tells me that he's having some sort of intimacies with other women. You told us that you believe that, right? Yeah. And you I believe do. that without talking to the women, right? Yes. Yet when we hear him in court saying that he never masturbated or jacked off before he met you, you're saying you won't believe that, right? Um, based on what he's other, also yes told me, then no. that would be no, because he has jacked off. Yes that. or no. You won't believe what he just said there, right? Mm, it wasn't consistent, so no. So no, you don't believe him, right? No, I don't believe that. And in fact, with regard to this recording, the person that was recording it was you, right? Yes. It wasn't him, right? No. And you're saying that it was for his benefit, though, right? That's what you told us on direct examination, right? No, I didn't say for his benefit. It was for us to listen to. Well... It was actually for your benefit, wasn't it? Um, I don't see how. We do. Yeah, blackmail. Well, in terms of who had control of it, that was you, right? Control of the recording? Yes, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about a recording that you made on May 10th of 2008. Are we clear on that? Yes. That recording was in your control, right? Yes. It was never in Mr. Alexander's control, was it? No. So that if anybody was going to enjoy that recording, it was you. No. Well, if anybody had it, it was you then, right? I had it, yes. And if anybody wanted to hear it again, that would be, the only person that could do that would be you, right? That's not right. How is it that Mr. Alexander could hear it if you were the only person who had it? That's what we were trying to figure out, how to replay it for him. Ma'am, you still had control of it though, didn't you? For about a week I did. Well, yes or no, did you have control of it? Yes, for a week. You keep saying for a week. Are you saying that you then gave it to him? No, that's not what I'm saying. All right, so, but you did have control of this recording in the sense that it was in your telephone, right? Yes. It was never in, mis in Mr. Alexander's possession, right? No. So if anybody wanted to listen to it, they would have to go through you, right? Um, at that time, yes. Well, what time do you think we're talking about, ma'am? I'm talking about for the week following the recording. I'm talking about... Beyond that, then the answer would be no. Uh, the week following the recording, you keep referencing that. Did something happen to the record? Did, did you give the recording to Mr. Alexander after a week? No. Did you give this recording to Mr. Alexander after two or three weeks? No, I never gave it to him. That's true. So if anybody was going to enjoy this recording, it wasn't Mr. Alexander because he didn't have control of it, right? That wasn't the purpose of the recording, so that would be Did I know. ask you what the purpose of the recording was, ma'am? No. I asked you if anybody was going to enjoy the fruits of this, whatever it was, 
It would have been you, right? It would have been Travis. For Christ's sake, it's like getting blood out of a stone, isn't it? Come on, woman, get with the bleeding program. Oh, so Travis was going to enjoy it even though he had no control over it, right? Um, I don't know how to answer that. Why don't you know how to answer that? Because You're the, the way one your that question is man, first. Excuse me. You were the one that was in control of it, right? Yes. And you were the one that re actually created that recording, right? We both created the recording. Well, no, that's not true. Was he pushing the button over and over to keep this recording going? No, or was, was that you? I was. So you created it then, right? I recorded it. We both created it together. No, you recorded it, which means that's how it came into being. He had nothing to do with the recording, did he? I don't agree with that. Overall. No, I don't agree with that. Um, so you're saying that somehow he was pushing a button in Mesa so that this recording would come about? Is that what you're saying? That's not what I'm saying. Well, technologically speaking, ma'am, the only person that was in control of creating this recording was you, right? That's correct. And um, he was a player, if you will, or one of the protagonists in this little tete -a -tete, whatever went on, right? That's correct. And so he didn't even know he was being recorded. That's not correct. Well, does he ever say at any point in that whole recording that we ever hear, could you record this for me? He doesn't say that, does he? No, it was already recording. Ma'am, does it say in that recording any words from Mr. Alexander that say anything to the effect that he knows that he's being recorded? Um, I don't think so. That's because he didn't. No, she's lying her ass off yet again. Yeah. I don't believe for a second that Travis knew this was being recorded. If he knew it was being recorded, I think he might have nipped it in the bud because of how compromising it would be for him and her. He probably what? was thinking of her as well. Yeah, but I don't think she was thinking of herself. Oh, God. Well, she was thinking of herself in terms of what she would do with it and yeah. how she could benefit from it. I'm guessing that she made this recording not because she wanted to feel hot, but because she wanted to one day be rich. Yeah. When you say you don't think so, you have had it. You were there when it was actually created, right? Yes. Uh, you were here when it was played, right? Yes. So you're familiar with this, right? Yes. And nowhere is there any indication that Mr. Alexander even knew that he was being recorded, right? Um... No, I don't think either of us say anything about it being recorded. And you didn't tell him throughout this whole, from what we heard, you didn't tell him that he was being recorded, right? I wouldn't have needed to. He already knew. Ma'am, yes or no? No. In this recording, did you tell him that he was being recorded? I answered no. So, and you had this recording for whatever purposes you wanted to use it, right? Um, yes. You could have posted it on the internet if you wanted to, right? In theory, yes, I could have. Well, not... It, it, that can be done. You know how to do that, right? Um, no, I didn't know how to get anything off the phone at that time, but if that was my goal, I could have figured that out. Sure. And um, this recording that you had, for whatever reason, you chose not to erase it, right? Um, not for a week. Did you erase it after a week? Is that what you're saying? I didn't have the opportunity. So no, I did not erase it after a week. Pardon? No, I didn't. So and you, you just said something about you didn't have an opportunity to erase it after a week. Uh, if this was on the 10th, what happened on May 17th that prevented you from re, um, having it uh, erased? Well, it may not have been exactly a week. I think it may have been the 18th instead of the 17th. Um, but I believed that my phone was stolen and it was actually lost for about, well, a few years. It didn't. Yeah, and we found the culprits. So according to you, this phone was stolen for approximately a couple of years, right? Yes, I reported it stolen with the police and they were, I had insurance on the phone, so they replaced a new one for me. And then it resurfaced, right? Yes. And, you know, yesterday when we talked about this issue involving recordings and, and that sort of thing involved and specifically involving Mr. Alexander's penis, one of the things that you told us was that, well, 
yes, I was the one that downloaded it onto the hard drive of my computer, right? Do you remember telling us that? Yes. If you would have been offended, ma'am, you could have deleted that photograph, right? If I was offended. Yeah, you could have, but you didn't do that, right? Right, I wasn't offended. Now, in terms of this recording, it also gives us a view into what your views are about the sexual relationship that you had with Mr. Alexander, doesn't it? Yes. And in fact, in it, you indicate that you want to um, blossom sexually, right? Yes. And that he's the person that is that you want to help you blossom sexually, correct? I didn't say want, I said I have with him and that I would like to in the future with somebody else. And I think I recall us saying at the time that um, blossoming in the sexual realm would involve something beautiful and romantic. It would not involve being shafted up the jacksy repeatedly, would it? No, and uh, would you find it enjoyable? And does blossoming in the sexual realm involve putting pop rocks in your mouth and giving someone a BJ? I don't think so. No. So she is full of the deep brown stuff as usual. Well, let's take a look so that we're uh, totally clear about what you said. No objection. 493 is admitted. You're, you're not joking. I mean, like, like, there are times when, when we just, I can't, I'm trying to think of an example. There's been a few times where I've been bold enough to just pull you onto the bed and start, and oh my gosh, do you remember that time I came to visit you when I was still living in California, and I fell asleep on your chair next to your bed, and you just like woke me up by pulling my pants off and totally licking my pussy? Yeah. I was so embarrassed because I just like got my Brazilian on and I was like worried about what it looked like, and I was like, ah, and the lights were bright and they were on, I was all self-conscious. <laughs> Out to the border, where the tuna fish play. But I remember that was hot. I was like, I was totally tired and I was asleep. And I would have been completely content just cuddling with you once we got into bed, but <laughs> you had another agenda. Uh, you gotta admit though, like, there's not many guys that would, would do that. It's just fine. Well, see, that's the thing, like, I don't know what the ratio is, but I get the impression that they're, I mean, it's kind of an awkward subject to bring up, but, you know, eventually we're both going to remarry people, and I just get the feeling that there aren't a lot of Mormon guys like that, and there may or may not, I'm sure there are plenty of freaky Mormon girls, but are they the marrying type? I shouldn't say that, I'm, I'm just saying, are they? I think we made the point about freaky Mormon girls when we first listened to this, didn't we? Yeah, we did. <laughs> yeah, but she's not just freaky, she's sneaky and she's creaky. Well, she is now because she's always, she's like pushing it, isn't she? <laughs> the type that you'd want to marry or the guys out there, the type that I'd want to marry. And, and I don't know, like, I really would like to marry some, um, a return missionary, but like you, someone who can be freaky... Like, I just worry about that. There are plenty of nice people out there, but I'm like, uh, I worry that I might feel like a wilting flower, is all, who never really blossomed to her full potential, at least in the sexual realm. I feel like I have with you, but like I still have plenty of blossom time left, and I want to live all those years being that way. I don't know. Yeah. And to paraphrase the great Edmund Blackadder, they will bury her in a Y-shaped coffin. That's all. Well, I'm, uh, I'm going to enjoy uh, your blossoms and I can walk through. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to tie you to a tree and put it in your ass, by the way. What's that? I'm going to tie you to a tree and put it in your ass, by the way. Oh my gosh. That is so debasing. I like it. <laughs>
Ben, you did hear the talk there as it started about a situation where he woke you up in a sexual fashion, didn't he? Yes. Do you remember on direct examination also telling us that on a previous occasion when you first had vaginal intercourse with him that he woke you up in a similar fashion, right? He, well, similarly, yes. Well, what you told us that at, at that time was that you were asleep. Do you remember telling us that? Yes. And that he pulled your panties or whatever it was that you were wearing down below, correct? Which, which time? The time that you claimed that he placed his penis inside you. I don't know. I wasn't awake for that. My panties were missing. Okay. What was that now? They were missing when I woke up. So, but you went to bed with them on, right? Um, I woke up without them still and I had to look for them. Well, ma'am, do you remember testifying on direct examination that you had your panties on and that he took your panties off? Do you remember testifying to that? I, yeah, I assumed he took them off. Well, I'm not saying you asking you to assume anything right now. I'm asking you whether or not you remember that that's what you testified to. Yes, I remember that. And as part of that encounter, one of the things that you told us was that he went inside you, right? Yes. And he didn't have permission, right? I guess technically not. Pathetic. Well, no, not technically. That's what you told us. Do you remember telling us that? Um... I remember my attorney asking me if I... Ma'am, I'm not asking you what your attorney asked you. I don't care about his questions. I care about your answers. My question to you, isn't it true that you responded or told us that he was doing it without your permission and that you didn't like it? I don't remember that. I don't remember characterizing it that way. And so you did like it when he went inside you? Um... She was asleep. It wasn't really like or dislike. I was just worried is all. You say that you're worried. So, and, and um, my question to you is, if you liked it or didn't like it, did you express any preference either way to Mr. Alexander? Um, I don't think I did. I can't remember which video it was, but one of our subscribers left us a comment recently and they said there is one sure sign of telling whether she is lying and that is when she prefaces everything with the word or the exclamation um or um. You can tell she is lying. What is going to follow is a lie. Well, she's done nothing but lie. Yeah. So, I mean, you can even see when she's getting off on what she's saying because she always smiles yeah dupers delight yet again she's multiple instances of that but if you notice as well she's pausing before she answers the questions because she's thinking of an answer she hasn't got anything she's got nothing to hit him with so she just comes up with something out of her backside and now we can see that she can't remember saying something that she said yeah but that's all on record of what she said. Yeah. All strategy by Juan Martinez to show the jury that not only is she an unreliable witness, she's a damn liar. You forget, did you forget what you told us that you did after that? I said his name after that. And then what after that, what did you remember that you told us that you did? That he, um, well, when I said his name and I kind of tried to get out from underneath him, his thrusts quickened and then... After that, we sort of broke apart and he pushed my head under the covers. Right. So that's the same, we're talking about the same encounter, right? Yes. And it was consensual, though, even though you were asleep, wasn't it? Objection, Your Honor. Mr. Gross is a lie. Overall, you may answer. Well, I didn't object to it. So if you didn't object to it, it meant it was consensual, right? Objection, Your Honor. Mr. Gross is a lie. She was asleep. Approach. When he placed his penis inside you while you were asleep, right? Yes, maybe just not morally, but other than that, I thought it was okay. Ma'am, is it yes? It's yes and no, but yes. mostly yes, I guess. Uh, the no part in you, that didn't report it to the police, right? Um, that wouldn't have been the no part. 
So, so the, the no part that didn't want it, that didn't get on the telephone and call the police, did it? Of course not, no. So the answer is no, you didn't call the police, right? That's the answer. You didn't stop the sexual encounter at that point either, did you? Um, I attempted to stop the intercourse, but not the whole sexual encounter. So the answer is no, you didn't stop the sexual encounter, correct? Correct. In fact, you continued on with the sexual encounter until you tell us there was a sexual release on his part, right? Yes. You never indicated to him afterwards not to do that, right? No. And in fact, what we just heard was you lauding him or praising him for waking you up, engaging in intercourse, oral intercourse with you, right? Yes. So it's the same thing, only something different is going inside your body without getting too graphic, isn't it? Well, I was awake when there was any kind of penetration on that account, so well, no. it's somewhat similar, I would say. Ma'am, do you want to hear this again where you indicate that you say you woke me up by pulling my pants off and licking my pussy? Yes. So he did wake you up in the same fashion, didn't he? Um, I was awoken as my pants were coming off. So, yeah, similar, yes. And you didn't have any problem with that, right? I was embarrassed, but other than that, no. When you say that you were embarrassed, you weren't embarrassed because of the sexual act. You were embarrassed because of the fact that you had just uh, taken some cosmetic uh, yes. approach to your pelvic area, correct? Yes, and the lights were bright, yes. Right. But other than that, there was, you didn't have any objection to it, right? That's right. And you wanted to continue to blossom, right? Um, yes. And you wanted to continue and you wanted to blossom sexually, right? Yes. Well, it ain't gonna happen now, is it? Unless she's got a very talented pair of scissors at the ready. Yeah, a pair of scissors that's also had a Brazilian on betting. So that when we hear, for example, that there was this situation where, uh, of the many that you've described, where he comes over to the, your house, for example, on the porch, and you guys do whatever it is that you do, that's part of the blossoming process, isn't it? Um, I would say so. And all the other activity that occurred between the two of you, including, for example, this telephone call that took place between two consenting adults, that's also part of the blossoming process, right? I guess so. Well, no, you were there, right? Well, I'm talking about sex, and I didn't have sex while I was on the phone, so... Uh, and you told us that for you it takes two hands, right? Yeah. It takes two, baby. And so, with regard to this particular conversation, you just didn't have any fun at all, right? No, I wasn't saying that. Well, um, your words and your demeanor speak for themselves on the telephone, correct? Yes. And one of the other things that we know from that conversation, in terms of your blossoming, is that you and uh, Mr. Alexander discussed making a movie, right? Yes. And you discussed making a sexual movie, correct? Yes. And it wasn't like you were telling him, no, I don't want... Um, to do that sexual movie, you actually were into it as much as he was, right? Yes. And in fact, as part of the sexual blossoming, there are other things that um, you asked him to do for you, didn't you? Yes. Let's take a look at some of them. text messages that you sent to Mr. Alexander, correct? Yes. What is, what is the date of those? The date is February 25th. And there is some a time there, but as you previously told us when you first testified on direct, that time is seven hours ahead of what the real time is, correct? That's correct. This is you sending him this text message, right? Yes. 
And this was part of the relationship that you had with him, right? That's right. There was a sexual component to it, wasn't it? Yes. And it was always a component that you and partook of as much as he did, right? Yes. And in it you say, hmm, if you're a lucky boy and you promise to give me a good, well-deserved spanking, and then there's a period there, right? Yes. And then you also say, maybe you could give my ass a too much needed pounding too. Kidding, correct? Yes. You're kidding about the second portion, but not the first portion, correct? Yes. But not a single sausage to indicate any of that, is there? No, there never is anything to prove anything. No, we all have to be mind readers, and she thinks we're all capable of reading her mind. Bollocks to that. Do you recognize that series of text messages? Yes. And those also involve some sexual activities between the two of you, correct? Um, yes. Well, ones we're anticipating. Pardon? Ones we're planning on. Look at the state of that. She looks so pleased with herself. Yeah. Now, if there was ever Jupiter's Delight, that was it. I know she was talking, she's reminiscing about, you know, um, planning sexual encounters with Travis, but she's, I think a part of this is her relishing her 15 minutes in the spotlight. I. It looks as though she's actually enjoying today's de testimony, doesn't it? Yeah, she looks like she's definitely enjoying that. Yeah, lots of little smiles, loads of Jupiter's Delight um, so far. Uh <laughs> That gets wiped off her face uh, tomorrow, doesn't it? Yeah, and I can't wait for that. Yeah. And the date on this is February 26th of 08, correct? 26th. Well, let me have you look at it. At least that's what it says. Um, it would have been the 25th, but it is. it says the 26th. And that's because of the seven-hour issue that we've talked about before. That's right. I move for the admission of Exhibit 495. You start out by saying, oh my gosh, this is so freaking hot, I want to lick it up and then sit on it, you are so tasty, my goodness, correct? Yes. You were talking about his penis, right? Yes, he sent me a photo of it. And it appears he did send you a photograph, correct? Yes. You were not offended by him sending you a photograph, correct? No. Even though we had a photograph here that was introduced, it was the same sort of photograph as the one that was introduced at trial, right? Yes. Nothing different than the one that was here that was introduced. In other words, it was his penis and whatever was happening with it, correct? In that regard, nothing was different. And in fact, he then said, I'm glad you like it, right? Yes. And then you said, oh yes, I want to fuck you like a dirty, horny little schoolgirl, right? Yes. Okay, big thing flashed out at me then, and I'm not talking about Travis's willy either. <laughs> but if she just wrote what she just wrote, which, you know, is disgusting, yeah. then if she thinks that Travis, you know, is into kids, wouldn't that be encouraging him? That would be encouraging him yep. putting something like that. And therefore, wouldn't that put her in a less than positive light? <laughs> More than less than positive. It's about to do that. So this is actually genius of Juan Martinez because he's making her out to be a hypocrite. Well, he's got all the evidence there to back it up. Yeah, he has. He's got this text message and he's got her own words that he can use against her. Um... You called him a pedophile, or a pedophile as we call him over here. Um, but you are encouraging him with this behaviour. Exactly. So, you know, what makes you think that you're any better than he is? We know that Travis didn't like kids. We know that, right? It's just her bullshit. But this is an interesting kind of 
how could I put it, bend in the road, isn't it? Twist. Yeah. Sort of thing. Very interesting. So the schoolgirl issue here in this conversation is being brought up by you, not by him, right? That's right. The, and in fact, this issue about the schoolgirl that may have been presented as part of the, uh, the uh, conversation on May 10th of 2008, well, you were enjoying it too, weren't you? Um, I don't think we said schoolgirl on the tape. Pardon? I don't think I said schoolgirl on the tape, but as far as that goes, yes. Yeah. You like dressing up like a horny little schoolgirl, for lack of a better term, right? Um, well, I think I said on direct I didn't have a schoolgirl outfit, but it was kind of, that was the idea. You slut. You did enjoy dressing up for him, right? Um, yes. And you enjoy at least indicating here in February of 2008 that it had to do with looking like a little schoolgirl, correct? Um, I guess so, yeah. Well, no, you keep saying you guess so, but isn't that what you wrote? No, I didn't say look in that text message. Pardon? You said looking like, and I don't see that in the text All message. All right, so, okay, let's read it. You, I want to fuck you like a dirty, horny little schoolgirl. So, that implies that you are dressed up in a certain fashion, right? Um, yes. And it also implies that, or indicates that it's you. That's the person that likes this sort of activity and looking like a horny little schoolgirl, right? Yes. Although we heard previously some talk about braids and that it was only him that wanted that. It was a consensual, mutual relationship, sexually speaking, wasn't it? Yes, always. Another point scored there. Did you hear that? Yep. First of all, she thought the braids were hot. And then she didn't think the braids were hot. And now she thinks the braids are hot again. Another point scored because it undermines her credibility even further with that jury. They don't know what to believe. Well, no, I mean, what's true? What's not? Do we believe anything that comes out of her? We believe we don't believe much, do we? No, I don't think that jury does. Unless it's stuff that's actually, you know, been proved that did happen or was said. You know, and she confirms it. That's the only thing that we'll believe. Anything else we think is just utter crap, in it? Yeah. This, again, this issue involving the idea that there was going to be a movie and what was going to happen in, t in the movie. Part of it, or what it took place during a conversation that you had on May 10th of 2008, right? Yes. And it can be characterized as phone sex, correct? Yes. And it can also be fair to say <laughs> that what people say during phone sex isn't necessarily true. Wouldn't you agree to that? I would agree to that. Oh, love this, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> She's answering the question before Nermi even has a chance to object. I mean... How much more of a farce can she make this? Well, maybe she doesn't want him to, to object, so that's why she's doing it. Yeah. It's my show. Let me star in my show. Yeah. Well, ma'am, what you said in your phone sex conversation with Mr. Uh, Alexander, according to your own testimony, part of it was a lie, wasn't it? Um... Are you talking about how he never jerked off? No, I'm talking about what you said. In that conversation, what you said, part of what was going on was a lie, wasn't it? Um, yes, part of it was a lie. Sure, it was a lie, right? And so at least if we're using this conversation as a point of reference, people, you and Mr. Alexander, but you specifically, you lied to him, right? I did. And there was no harm in it because it was just a fantasy kind of conversation, wasn't it? Yeah, it was just fantasy. Right, and that, so that if he says he wants to tie you up to a tree and stick it up your ass, that could also be seen as fantasy, right? Yes. That never happened, did it? No. And talking about, for example, these things about the movie and that sort of thing, whether or not you believed it or not, it was part of the fantasy of that conversation, wasn't it? Yes. So, for example, if you just listen to one of these snippets or one of these uh, exchanges, we can see that perhaps it's just all a fantasy. Let me have this mark as an example. I'm going to 
And ma'am, before we listen to it, in this particular uh, excerpt, you would actually indicate that um, you believe that maybe this making of this movie could be artistic. I want you to listen to that. I was saying, I don't, I'd like to, I'm kind of envisioning one, like, when you're kitty fucking me, but, like, I'm looking with my head tilted back, so all you can really see is, like, the outline of my chin and some of my cheek and jawbone, and, like, my ears and hair, but you can't really see the rest of my face. You could just see a dick between two tits, like, in focus with the neck and everything sort of a little bit blurry, but they're, like, kind of artistic, you know what I'm saying? That's uh, great. I don't know if we could do that because your legs may take up the spot where the camera should be, but I think we could get something like that. Or vice versa. Ooh, I've got more ideas. Okay, go ahead. Well, we'll work it out. Worst case scenario, we could do it from like the reverse angle or mm -hmm. just like the other way. Mm -hmm. And we could still blur my face and put your coffee in the yeah. oh, You have a good looking dick, baby. I'm just going to let you know. You like my dick? Yeah. It's, it's like, oh, it, it just, oh, it's so smooth, and it goes so, oh, every time you fuck me, oh, so good. If this is going the way we think it's going, we just want you to know we're taking one for the team, eh? Yeah. So, if you went, you went just where I needed it, just went where I just... I just needed it bad. You, just, you fucked me so right. <sighs> you, you do say that. Thank Christ for that. It could be an artistic endeavor, right? Yes. And in fact, that comes from the fact that you like to take photographs, correct? Yes. And that's sort of one side of your life that you have, correct? Yes. And so, again, the fact that you're talking about it doesn't mean that you're actually going to do it, right? Um, we were kind of tentatively planning it, but I don't know whether we were actually going to do it or not. Right, and it's a situation again that sometimes when people are involved in a sexual situation like what this appears to be, they caught, get caught up in the heat of the moment and they say things that are um, related to what's going on, correct? I would agree with that. And during this conversation, you and he actually discussed whether or not you guys should stop this particular activity of having sex, don't you? Um, stop having sex? Or stop having sex, stop having porn sex, that sort of thing. I think we did, yes. Well, let's hear what uh, you actually said. No objection. 497 is admitted. Yeah, well, I can't wait to get pictures of Jizzle on your face. <laughs> That's going to be cool, actually. It's going to be. Try to get one pad while I'm coming up your face. Yeah, definitely. Like mid shot. Mm hmm. You make me so horny. I seriously think about having sex with you every day. Several times a day. I think about how it feels to have your cock deep inside of me. I remember it. I want it again. Is it an ongoing glad we started fucking? What? Yeah, I'm really glad that we started fucking. <laughs> well, if it's wrong, then I don't want to be right. <laughs> I guess I'm glad too. Like, seriously? Yeah, certainly, I'm like, okay. It's Jody, I'm just saying, I'm Jody, I'm not Jody. Like, I. 
I I don't know. But it, what's wrong is that I wish we were doing it before. Because yeah. that was good. And it, 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 once we did it, why, why not do it? Yeah. <laughs> I know what you mean. And it appears that there's a bit of a conflict because the two of you keep engaging in sexual activity, correct? That's correct. Whether it be by telephone or whether it be in person, correct? Yes. And this issue involving you and he having sex, it also created a conflict for him, right? Yes. And you knew that it had to do with the LDS faith, right? Yes. And you were also LDS and that created a conflict for you too, right? Yes. And so it wasn't a situation that it was a secret to both of you that perhaps um, since you were both members of the LDS faith, this is not what you should be engaging in, right? That's right. But neither of you care, right? Objection also speculation. Sustained. I think you did a little too much LDS. Ma'am, you still continue to engage in sexual activities with him, even though you had this conflict, didn't you? Yes. And even though he says he has this conflict here, he still continued to have sex with you, right? Yes. So even though you were two conflicted persons, you still continue to engage in this activity, right? Yeah, that's what the conflict was about. Right. And in fact, you even had a description of the two of you, didn't you, in that conversation that we just heard from May 10th of 2008, don't you? Yes. Let's hear what you said. I move for the admission of 498. No objection. 498 is admitted. That's right. I asked you not to so I can get in the Hang on, I thought I heard somebody. Let me just double check. Oh, I think it was my perjure. Whether she's horny or not, she's definitely a toad. Ma'am, that's just an acknowledgement there that both of you are into each other sexually, correct? That's correct. And there's no indication from anything that we've heard that you were offended uh, by the sexual, physical sexual activities that were going on, right? Right. It may have been a conflict, but the two of you enjoyed each other. <coughs> At least you enjoyed him as much as it appeared that he was enjoying you, right? Yes. And you had at least that kind of relationship to the point where you actually had a uh, name for him or a pet name for him, didn't you? Yes. Drop your panties, Sarasa. I cannot wait till lunchtime. Let me show you this exhibit. Take a look at uh, exhibit 499. Do you recognize it? Yes. It's a text message that you sent, right? Yes. What's the date? The date is 21st. Um, actually, it would have been the 20th of January. And. Um, you're saying that it was the 21st of January because uh, of the time difference, right? Yes, it was the 20th, but it shows the 21st. Move for the admission of Exhibit 4. No objection. 499 is admitted.
And that's you sending him a message saying, Hey, Hadi Biscotti will call you. Will you call me before you hit the sack, right? Yes. I have a question about tomorrow morning. Thanks, my dear, correct? That's correct. And you actually called him Hadi Biscotti, correct? Yes. And that's because he was, in part, because he was special to you, right? Yes. Because apparently at that time you were in love with him, right? I believe I was, yes. Obsession. And it's something that two people who are intimate have in common, right? Uh, yes. But he really wasn't that special to you, was he? I wouldn't say that. Well, let's take a look at another exhibit. 287. This is to Ryan Burns. You see that? It says Ryan's PPL, Gmail. Right. You're me, you see that? Yes. And you say to him, at some point before you go meet him, hey, Hadi Biscotti, what's new, right? Yes. Isn't that the same thing that you called Mr. Alexander? Yes, I call a lot of people that. So, what you're saying is, when you call that Mr. Alexander that, it didn't mean anything then? Um, I wouldn't say it was meaningless, no. It could also mean that when you started calling <laughs> Mr. Uh, Burns, Hadi Biscotti, was that Mr. Alexander really didn't mean that much to you, right? That's not what it meant. Well, it could, though, based on what we've seen. She's answered the question. Distinct. You called them both by the same name, right? Yes. And you only had one encounter with Mr. Burns, correct? Um... Well, I met him once, and then I saw him again, so that would be twice, but if you're talking about the physical encounter, yeah, right. one time, I guess. Yeah, one time, right? Unless you count shaking his hand, which I guess that doesn't really Pardon? count. I didn't hear what you said. I'm sorry, unless you count, we shook hands and spoke briefly. I don't even really remember it, so it was pretty brief, but... In terms of a one-on-one -on -one with yes, Mr. Burns, it was one. only one time, right? Yes. And you're already calling him Hadi Biscotti, at least through this PPL, or at least through this instant messaging thing, right? That's right. How can I look you in the raisin eyes again? And uh, exhibit number 286, it tells us a little bit more of what actually happened when you went to see him. <coughs> I want you to go down here and read what he says, starting with the ha-ha, if you can read it. If not, I'll bring it in. Go ahead and read it out loud. It says, ha-ha, well, we woke up, we sat there for a bit, and then we held each other, and then we started to kiss. Then you said I could not be comfortable, and you adjusted me. So it does say that you told him that he could not be comfortable, and so you adjusted him, right? Yes. And then what else does he say? It's above it. Then you pressed your body really close to mine and started to kiss me. So, he, he was. You were on top of him, weren't you? Yes, well, kind of on top of him, off to the side a little. I think on his left. But you did start to press your body close to him, right? Yes. And then you say, what? Um, it's right above it. What, well, I think it's out of order, but I say, well, I would gladly give it to you. And then... Right above it, he asks. Can I ask what else you might give me? And your answer is? You can ask, but you'll have to wait and see for that one. Bottom line, you're sort of already involved in the same sort of give and take that you were involved with uh, Mr. Alexander, correct? Yes. We may have asked this before, and once again, if we have, please do forgive us. But I'm kind of wondering, you know, the whole Ryan Burns thing. Was he only, you know, supposed to be there for Jodie as an alibi? Or did she, you know, honestly think that she may have had a shot at some sort of future with him? I'm a bit confused about that. I don't think she intended any kind of future with Ryan. I think he was just there for an alibi for, yeah. for her. That was all. She didn't intend on having a relationship with him. Yeah, to explain away kind of the the immediate aftermath yeah 
Yeah, it's possible. Um, I tend to doubt that she ever had any intentions towards kind of a future with Ryan either. Um, and if she did, he would have found out who she was and he would have dropped her like a bad habit, wouldn't he? <laughs> yeah, if he had that chance. Yeah, if she didn't kill him first. Ma'am, there's a, a number of stories that you gave in this particular case um, involving the killing. Um, there was one that you gave on the 15th of July of 2008 to Detective Flores, right? Yes. There's another one that you gave on July 16th of 2008 to Detective Flores, right? Yes. But then you still gave another view of what happened to 48 hours, right? Um, I think I was inconsistent in my lies, yes. What do you mean, was? So let's take a look at uh, what you may have said 48 hours. I move for the admission of the 500. No objection. Okay, you Yeah, let me talk about, um, I'll talk about this, and nobody knows this. The detectives know this, um, because I've, I've spoken with them. Um, boy, this is really hard. That's what she said! <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think if I want to say this or not. Don't say it! Don't say it! Um... I, there, there is a lot of evidence that places me at Travis's house the day he was, or not just the day he was um, killed, but the day, you know, that, most of that week. Um, and there is a reason for that. And that reason is that, um, that I did see Travis the day that he passed away. And um, a lot of things happened that day. Um, I almost lost my life as well. Turn a cold. And I was told that I can't speak about it or tell anyone about it um, because my family's life was in danger over it. Um, I was told that if I did, that um, they would all die and that I would die. And, um, and that was kind of the end of the story. Um, there was an argument among some people um, two individuals that uh, one wanted to take my life and one said, you know, that's, that's not why we came. And, um, pretty sure, I think it was episode four or five that we covered this, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and we'll basically repeat now what we said then. Why would they kill Travis and leave her alive? It does not make sense. And they wouldn't stand there describing to her about not to talk to certain people and take ages after they've just murdered someone. Yeah. Um, basically, if they've killed Travis and they've got a witness, they've got nothing to lose by killing the witness. Exactly. So this explanation just breaks down, doesn't it, under all scrutiny? Yeah, and also, there were no other DNA of anyone else nope. present. So she couldn't even do that story. She bled while she was stabbing him. She cut her hand while she was stabbing him. Her DNA was mixed with his. There was no other DNA. You're quite right. So her story is utter piss flaps. Um, at one point, the, the guy with the gun sort of came to her pressure, um, I think, because he was holding the gun at my forehead and uh, I was on the ground on my knees and um, was near the armoire of where he kept his TV in his bedroom and Travis was in the bathroom um, and uh, she was standing over Travis near him and he was the guy with the gun was standing near me and and again this argument was going on back and forth um, and I just remember holding my head and closing my eyes 
Um, and then there was so much that went on that day, but the short of it is he pulled the trigger and nothing happened, just a click. And um, I realized then that, that, that he probably, I don't know if, if that means that he was out of bullets or well, I don't know what that means, you know, I wasn't that familiar with handguns. And so um, at that point I pushed past him and I ran down the stairs. He didn't make much of an effort to stop me. Um, but I could almost swear that I heard someone following me down the stairs and I, I ran out the front door and I got into my car and I drove and I left. I'd still call 911, wouldn't you? Yeah, or I'd call ambulance. I'd call, my, I'd call anyone who I could. Yeah, somebody. And give full descriptions of these two. How they sounded, how tall they were. But she did nothing, did she? No, she just drove straight to Ryan Burns. Once again, this is why this story fell apart. Ma'am, nowhere in that recitation, or in any of the interviews that you gave with 48 Hours, did you ever indicate that you had memory loss, correct? That's correct. And in fact, you gave a slightly different view of the same event to 48 hours on another occasion, didn't you? Yes, couldn't keep my story straight. You still can't love. No objection. Bravo, when is admitted? Um, again, I was looking down and, and going through some photos. Um, he, he is really critical of himself. Um, you know, we're all our own worst critics, and so, you know, I, he, some pictures he liked, some he didn't. Um, and I was looking through the pictures and I heard again a loud pop and um, I was hit on the back of the head. Um, I don't think I was out very long, but when I came to, uh, I was kind of laying next to the bathtub, the bathtub and the shower right next to each other. And um, Travis was on all fours on the tile and he was, well, I say all fours, but one of his hands was actually holding his head. And, I mean, he wasn't laying down or anything. He was kind of on his knees and on the, you know, on his hands. Um, and at that point, I looked over toward the entrance of the bathroom. There was a hallway, and two people were walking down the hallway. And I ran into the closet. It's a big closet. Um, and I was going to run out the other door, except he stopped me with a gun pointed at my forehead. And I was just, you know, when you have a gun pointed to your forehead, you just do anything. Um, so he told me to get down onto my knees and stand over or sit over by the armoire. So I just stayed there, squatting on my knees next to the armoire. And um, he left the room for a minute, maybe a few minutes. In any non-marshmallow scenario, you would use those vital few minutes to improvise, wouldn't you? Yeah. You'd... Um either find a phone and call the police or you'd get help some way. If she's to be believed of this and if he was in, if she was in the bathroom and then he left the room, why didn't she try to get away? Yeah. And get help. Yeah. This is it. I mean, you know, if she was in the bathroom and he had left the room, she's on her own in there. Find a phone, do something. Get a yeah. weapon. That's what any normal person would do. But this is pulled straight out of her marshmallow garden. With Travis, she, she just said that he was on like all fours. I believe her on that. Um, and if you notice, she's kind of little hint of a smile on her face as she's doing this. So, yeah, this is Duper's delight. This is pride. She's prou proud at what she's done. Definitely. And how she's trying to fool the world that it wasn't her. But she didn't. <laughs> and um, she was in the bathroom, standing over Travis. 
and I charged her. I ran down that hall and I pushed her as, as hard as I could and she fell over him, um, landed near the sink. Uh, There's two sinks in the, in the master bath and he landed near the um, left sink, near the, kind of near the trash can, close to the windows. And, um, and I started to pull on him and I said, come on, come on, come on, let's go, let's go. And um, he just wasn't, he was sluggish and lethargic and he just wasn't getting up and he wasn't really saying much of anything. He was there and he was conscious and I could see that. Um, he wasn't saying much. I was able to get him about, he was sort of not crawling, but he was kind of moving and was trying to stand up. And I was able to get him about halfway down the hallway when she came back at me and we struggled for a few minutes. Um, and again, she was doing what she could to overpower me and she was kicking me and she was stomping on my feet and she was trying to kick my knees and I was kind of bending them or trying to do what I could. Um, and he came back in the room and um, again I had to go back to where I was sitting and stay there and that's when they both began to argue about whether or not I should die. And um, there was an argument uh, that went on back and forth between them for several minutes, at least it felt like several minutes. Um, and he didn't want to and she did and, and um, she kept saying why, she, why they should and, and um, he kept saying, well, that's not why we came here and, um, you know, after he had gone through my purse again, he finally just pulled the trigger and I thought, it, honestly, it's over. It's, it's the weirdest feeling to, to think that it's going to be over at any second and then someone pulls the trigger, but you're still there. And um, at that point, I just, I just ran. I pushed right past him. And I flew down the stairs. And like there's part of, like, I wasn't even in my body. I think I was, but it felt, everything felt numb. Um, I was hyperventilating and my heart was racing. And so even as I went down the stairs, there's part of me, like my brain was telling my legs, don't screw up or you're gonna fly down these stairs. and, and and you're not going to get away. Um, um, so I'm, you know, trying my best not to stumble down these stairs. And I just went out as fast as I could and, and out the door and slammed the door behind me and, and got in the car and left. Now that that bunch of bollocks is over, we just want to apologize to you, our subscribers, our viewers and our listeners, um, that you won't be able to get that time back. But if it's any consolation, neither can we. <laughs> that's true. And that's another version of the events that occurred on June 4th of 2008, correct? Yes. And they're not true? Neither like, of them. Well, it's all the same thing, it's just different versions, I couldn't keep my life straight. So the answer is, they're not true, right? Neither of them, yes. Ma'am, you did also continue to talk to 48 Hours about uh, coming to Mesa. Do you remember talking to them about that? Yes. And do you remember talking to them about how your what your plans were initially? Do you remember about that? Yes. And you, the reason that you came up to Mesa, you didn't have a plan initially, correct? Do you mean on June fourth? Pardon? Are you talking about on June fourth? I'm talking about when we left uh, Puerto Rico. What was your question? I'm sorry. My question is, according to you, you didn't have any plans to come to Mesa initially uh, when you left Puerto Rico, correct? That's correct. And in fact, that's something that you told 48 hours, right? Yes. Let's take a look at what you told them. Objection. Our vote is admitted. So tell me about this trip on this particular day. What, what did you 
climate events, or did you surprise me? No, them? I'm really um, kind of like go by the wind when I take my road trips. Um, I usually plan more than I can actually do, and then I elim cross some off the list when I when I feel I can't. So on this last trip, my my plan was to go to Monterey, to Los Angeles, to San Diego, to Utah, and then over to Death Valley, and then back up to Wairica. And it certainly didn't go anything like that. It went Santa Cruz, and then Monterey. And then I went to LA and Pasadena. And then I skipped San Diego. And it was when I was in Pasadena that night that I decided to go to Mesa. And uh, Travis had found out about my road trip um, about a week prior. And he has this way of kind of guilting me. Um, not in a bad way, just like making me sort of feel bad. So he said, well, why don't you come to Mesa instead? And you can visit me. And uh, I was like, no, you know, I, I have other things that I need to do and other plans and other people. I didn't say it in that way because you have to kind of be delicate about, about it. Otherwise, you know, he, he would take offense, I think. And so he would say things like, okay, I see, whatever. I see how it is. You don't love me, you know, just as a joke, though. And so it just kind of pulls on my heartstrings a little. And, and again, I was weak and I folded and I decided that I'm going to go. And so I called him when I was in Pasadena and said, guess what? And he said, what? And I said, I'm coming to Mesa. And he said, really? And I said, yeah. He's like, all right, cool. And so, um, you know, we hung up the phone and I drove and um, I told him he didn't have to wait up for me because, you know, I was still in Pasadena and that's probably a good five hours and something just all the way to Mesa. Um, so, and, and as well as that, my phone was about, about to die. So, you know, I just said, you know, if I don't speak to you again until I get there, then, you know, that, that's why. And so he, I, I showed up, I think around 4 a.m. And uh, he was still awake. He had stayed up all night. He was on, on the internet looking up some videos on YouTube, some silly videos. And we watched some more videos for a little while. And then it was just like I was exhausted from the drive. So we just went to bed and went to sleep. And, uh, you know. Oh, isn't that wonderful? What's wonderful? The fact that she came up for air. With regard to the videos that uh, he was looking at, we've heard something about quicker, faster, stronger, something like that. They weren't of any sexual nature, were they? No. And in fact, it may have been the way you describe it, that it was some people with some sort of weird or funny headgear that were just dancing around. That's yeah. The way you describe it, It right? looked that way, yes. And so you actually left Wairika on uh, June 2nd of 2008, correct? Yes. And prior to that, though, you made some preparations, didn't you? Yes. You made some preparations in the sense that, according to you, you made a reservation to rent a car, right? Right. And the reservation to rent the car was made not in Wairika, but in some other place, right? It was made online. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry, in Reading, for Reading. Yes. Right. And uh, Wairika does have some rental car companies, correct? That's correct. And in fact, what happened was that when you went to Reading to rent the car, you even had to, for lack of a better term, inconvenience somebody else to take you to get your car, to get the rental car, and then take you back to um, their house, right? That's right. I hope this scum has not inconvenienced you. And it would have been much more convenient in Wairika to go rent the car in Wairika, wouldn't it? Not for my bank account, no. Well, when you're saying your bank account, you're talking about financial reasons, right? Right. And um, how much money did you take with you in cash? I don't recall, but it was probably a few hundred, I think. So when you say a few hundred, are we talking about 200? Maybe that. Not much more. Somewhere in that ballpark. It was between like 80 and 200. I don't remember the exact amount. So it's between 80 and 200 dollars, maximum being 200 dollars, right? I think. I don't really remember as far as cash. Well, could it have been 300 dollars? It could have. I don't remember having that much cash on me, but I guess it could have. If, if you don't remember having that much cash on you, then it wasn't $300, right? Well, it just means I don't remember. Probably not. All right. And so previously during the direct examination, you told us that when you go on these trips, you don't take usually more than $200. Do you remember telling us that? Yeah, that's typical. And so in this particular case, you said, well, I had financial issues, and so I decided to rent out of Reading because it was cheaper, right? That's right. But it would have been more convenient, though, to rent from Wairika, correct? Um, convenient for who? You. In no. Terms of picking, in terms of picking up the car, it wouldn't have been convenient? Um, no. Well, Wairika, you told us, was a small town, right? Yes. And you indicated that everybody sort of knows everybody there, right? And that's exactly why she didn't rent it in Wairika. Yeah, because someone would know her. Yeah, 
and someone would say Jodie Airy so yeah she rented a car off us yeah so she had to go out of town to do it but I'm just very very um, curious as to the bullshit excuse she's gonna offer as to why she didn't rent it in Wairika that's mm -hmm. gonna be funny I think oh yeah um, that's pretty much the case. And uh, the other thing that you told us about Wairika was that people know everybody else's business there, right? Um, usually. Right. And in fact, one of the examples that you gave us of where people in Wairika know what's going on was the example when you were 17 and you went to, uh, or you skipped a class. Do you remember telling us that? Um, yes. It was a history exam that you had to prepare for, right? That's right. And you indicated that you went somewhere in the car and you were studying, right? Yes. And while you were studying, your father found you, right? Yes. And one of the explanations or reasons that you gave for that was that Wairika is a very small town, right? I don't remember giving that explanation because that's not how, why he found me. Well, you indicated that you don't know how he found you, right? I knew how he found me. Well, that's not what you told us on direct examination. Oh, I mean, I knew why he went to go looking for me. How he found me was he was just driving around. I'm sorry. Ma'am, that's not what you told us on direct examination, right? I don't remember. That's uh, not fact. Again, do you have problems remembering what you just told us less than a couple of weeks ago? Occasionally, I guess. She can't keep track of her own lies, eh? Nope, that's why she keeps tripping over. Um, this, she's, she, it's all going exactly to plan for Juan Martinez, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Exactly to plan. And in this particular case, you're having trouble remembering what you told us as to how your father found you, right? I'm having trouble with how you're characterizing it, I think. Well, again, we're going to get into this word exchange issue, but um, my question to you is, do you remember telling us on direct examination that Wairika is a small town and that's part of the reason or how your father found you. Do you remember telling us that? Yes. And so Wairika in 2008 is not much bigger than it was in 1997 or 1998 when this happened, right? No, I think it's about a thousand more in population. Right. It's, it's, not, it's only a thousand more in population. In other words, it's not a town that's exploding in terms of population, right? Yes. It is or it is not. Yes, that's right. I'm sorry. <laughs> and so that in people in Wairika, if somebody does something, more likely than not, they may end up meeting somebody that they know, right? There's an speculation. Of world. Yes. So, for example, if you went to the one of the two or either of the two um, car rental agencies that are there in Wairika, um, somebody may have been able to know or talk about it later if they were asked about it, correct? Um, perhaps. People wouldn't know me though because I hadn't lived there for 10, 15 years. But they may have, right? Some. A few high school friends or something. Oh, I don't know. One look at that electrical outlet for a nose and the raising eyes. Pretty unforgettable, eh? Again, it's not a very large town, right? Yes. And in fact, what's the population is what, 11,000? I think it's 7,000. 7,000? 7, something, yeah. And, um, you, uh, at the time, back in uh, uh, June 2nd of 2008, you were working, right? Um, yes. And where you were in this town, there aren't that many bars, right? Um, I think there are like five or six bars. Right. And one of, there isn't one called Margaritaville, right? No, there's not. Uh, you worked at Casa Ramos, right? Yes. And you had some time off, didn't you? Um, yes. And this was going to be part of your vacation, right? Road trip, yes. The road trip was your vacation. Well, that took us a bit by surprise. Yeah, the, uh, the audio is missing from the uh, original source, so we thought we'd better fill these awkward moments of silence <laughs> yeah. with a little bit of conversation. Yeah, so sorry about that, guys. Wanna, there isn't one called Margaritaville, right? No, there's not. Uh, you worked at Casa Ramos, right? Yes. And you had some time off, didn't you? Um, yes. And this was going to be part of your vacation, right? Road trip, yes. The road trip was your vacation, right? Um, it was partially vacation, partially a business trip. And when you say partially business trip, what you're saying is, for example, that if you went to buy gas, that's something that could be deductible, correct? 
Um, if it was for the business purpose, yes, it would be deductible. Sure. And in fact, since you were going to go to Utah, going to a gas station, it would, it would make sense to save the receipts so that you could then deduct them from your income taxes, right? That's right. And in this particular case, it didn't, wouldn't matter whether or not you paid cash or you paid with a credit card, right? Um, it wouldn't matter for tax purposes. Right, no. as long as you had the receipts, right? Yes. And in this case, one, so you did pay at least attention to the receipts that you got, for example, from um, the gas station, right? Um, what do you mean by pay attention? Cap them. Yeah, I just throwed everything in the shoebox. Right, you threw everything in the shoebox, everything related to this trip, right? Yes. All of the receipts from this trip were thrown in this shoebox that we've seen previously, right? No, probably not all, but just whatever was left over in my wallet. That's another thing that's never failed to amaze us, is it, isn't it? I know. Why would she keep the receipts from this trip in particular as well? Well, to her, she probably thought she could claim back the expenses. Yeah, but without them, you know, Juan Martinez couldn't have proved really that she bought that third gas can. No, he couldn't. So without them, and, and he wouldn't have been able to prove how much gas she had actually spent money on on that trip so her keeping those receipts is essentially what ended up convicting her exactly way to shoot yourself in the foot love well but you were trying to pay attention to keep the receipts that were related to a business expense right somewhat i'm very disorganized but that's kind of my effort yeah well no that's what you were attempting to do right yes and in fact you were you did save some of the receipts involved in with this particular trip, right? Yes. And so you're in Wairika and you decide instead to rent a car from Redding, California, right? Yes. And that's south of Wairika, correct? Yes, on my way. And it is on the way, but it is south, correct? Yes. And it's what, 90 miles away? I think it's um, 99 miles. So in terms of travel, we're talking about what, uh, close to two hours? Um. Maybe just under two hours, I think. And um, on this particular day that you left, on June 2nd of uh, 2008, you left the house around 5 o'clock in the morning, something like that, right? Yeah, I think so. It was very early in the morning. Well, you were at the Reading Airport by 8 o'clock, weren't you? Yes. And so, um, did you get there before 8 o'clock and just wait around, or did you get there at about the same, at that time? Um, I don't remember waiting. Well, I waited a little bit because there was a line, but not waiting for them to open. And somebody was with you, correct? Uh, yes. A guy was with you, right? I can't remember if it was my brother's neighbor or my sister-in-law, but I think it was my sister-in-law. So either one of them dropped me off and picked me up or vice versa. Hasn't people speculated that this was um, Matt McCartney who went with her? Yeah, there have been people saying that in the comments. Uh, that Matt McCartney was the one who took her there. Um, if it was, it's just like her to embellish it, isn't it? Of course it is. And claim it was some phantom relative of Bert and Ernie. Yeah, there's nothing new there. Yeah, probably the Count. No, that was uh, that was Bobby, wasn't it? I think so. <laughs> oh, greetings! It is I, the Count. So when you're saying that um, they dropped you off and picked you up. What you're saying is that they did not get out of the car that took you to the Reading Airport, correct? Um, I don't remember. You don't remember whether or not they went up to the counter with you? I think I was alone. So you, you were here when Mr. Colombo testified, correct, as to whether or not you were accompanied, correct? Yes. And so um, what time did you arrive at your, this would be your sister's house, right? Um, yes. What time did you get there? Before renting the car, you mean? Yes. That, that was the only time that you got there on June 2nd, correct? No, I got there with the rental car afterward and Pardon? took a nap. No, I went back to her house. All right. The first time before you rented the car? Um, in the morning. I don't remember the exact time. So it would have been, and they knew you were coming, correct? Yes. And so they were ready to then take you down to the airport, right? Yes. And they dropped you off and then you went to pick up the car, right? Um... I believe they did, yes. And uh, one of the things that happened is that you initially were given a car, or rented a car, by Mr. Uh, uh, Colombo. Yes. Colombo, correct? Yes. And uh, the car that uh, 
he offered you initially was red, right? Uh, yes. And you told him I didn't, that you didn't want the red car, right? That's right. And the reason that you told him that you didn't want the red car was because it would call attention to the, or it, it would be, or it would stand out more, correct? No. Well, didn't you tell him that you, you did want to exchange the car though, right? Yes. And you told him that red is a color that police officers sort of focus on. Do you remember telling him that? Um, is that yes or no? I'm trying to remember. I don't think I worded it that way. That's a load of bollocks, by the way, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It doesn't matter what colour car you're driving. You could be driving a pink car with yellow spots. Um, if you break the law, if you give the officer probable cause to search your vehicle, it doesn't matter what colour your car is. It's true that she's a bloody liar because she did word it that way. I yeah. remember when she was answering the question. From Nermi? Yeah. Yeah. Um, like I said, selective memory. So you did give him a reason why you didn't want that car, right? Yeah. And part of it had to do with the color, right? Yes. You didn't want the color red, yes. correct? The color red seems to stand out, doesn't it? I don't know. I just heard they get more tickets. Right. And so it had to do with the police department, right? You did not want to stand out. And that's why you wanted a different color, correct? Not the police department because I'd be on the freeway. Um, I just didn't want to get tickets. And well, I wanted to get more tickets. Who, get, who do you think gives... Uh, traffic citations, man. Um, on the freeways in California, it's the California Highway Patrol. That's police, aren't they? I, would, I don't think they're police. I think they're law enforcement, but not categorized as police. Not to my knowledge, anyway. So if there's a crime, you're saying that the California Highway Patrol doesn't respond to them? Um, they respond as well as maybe the sheriff's office or something. Depends on the district, I would imagine. So Jody thinks that people get dressed up as John and Poncho from Chips. Um, as Poncho. cosplay and go, you know, cruising... California freeways and pull people over but don't have any authority is is she from the moon is she from Mars hello what planet are you living on she's probably from another planet considering what the bleeding thing she's been coming out with I mean you know she lives in California so she must have seen the California Highway Patrol does she not see the badges that they wear <laughs> she's plain stupid do they not see the uniforms do they not see the i think they have to protect and serve on there don't they they do she is an absolute muppet right and so um you were afraid that police whether it includes the california highway patrol or somebody driving down the street that they would focus in on your car because you had heard that police get more tickets involving a red car, correct? Afraid? No, I wasn't afraid. I just didn't want to shell out more money for tickets. Right. So, afraid may not be the word that you like. What word would you like? Concerned? Um, I don't know. I well, guess. no, you're the one that said afraid wasn't the right word. Why don't you tell me what word you would use in describing your reluctance in taking a red car? Um, it was motivated, motivated by um, financial frugality. Well, it, you're telling us then that the red car was cheaper to rent than the white car. No, in theory, I would be less likely to get a speeding ticket and shell out hundreds of dollars if I were not in a red car. Anecdotal, but how many red cars have I owned? Two. And how many tickets did I get in those red cars? Zero. And how many times was I pulled over by the police in those red cars? Zero. And how many times was I caught speeding or going through a red light in those red cars? Zero. She is full of shit. So what you're saying is the red car, in your view, because of the color, stands out more to police departments whether they be California Highway Patrol, whether they be the Salinas Police Department, whether they be the Reading Police Department, right? I'd be speculating, but I guess that's why they get more tickets. I don't know. Well, no, I don't want you to guess because I want you to tell us what you were thinking at the time because you were the one that made this request involving the red car. Well, my thought is that red cars, drivers of red cars tend to drive faster, they get more tickets. That's just what I've always been told. What? Right. But you, that's what other drivers do. You, you supposedly were going to adhere to the speed limit or within 10 miles of it, right? 
Um, usually, I tried. All right, so if you do that, then you really shouldn't have too much of a concern about a traffic citation then, right? Um, that's not right. I've been cited before when the radar was off. And how many times have you been cited before for speeding, ma'am, when your speed was over 10 miles an hour, over the speed limit? Several times. Give me one time. Um, one time I was driving on Highway 1 south of Carmel, or just entering Carmel Highlands, and I was going, um, I think, 60-something in a 50, and I got pulled over, and he clocked me at, he said, 70. Let, let me stop you. You said you were going 60-something in a 50-mile-per-hour zone, right? Yes. That means you were going over the 10-mile issue that I just presented to you. Yes. The deeper we get into this trial and the more testimony we hear from her, I am convinced that she is living her life through a thousand movies. This one is the cannonball run. She didn't think she would get pulled over for that. And if she did get pulled over, she would do what the ladies in the cannonball run did. You know, zip down, show a bit of cleavage, just hope it's not a female officer. Exactly. So in other words, what I'm asking you, can you give me an example where you were driving either the speed limit or within nine miles of the speed limit where you were given a ticket? We are going to take the noon recess at this time. Ladies and gentlemen, please be back in the designated area at 125. Please remember the admonition. You are excused. Please be seated. The record will show the jury has left the courtroom. This area, she may step down. Counsel, is there anything else before lunch? No, we're on objection. Why don't you approach? Once more, a place of green beans awaits the jury. The gallery is going out for a cigarette. Um, and we are in recess. Quite a few points scored there, don't you think? Absolutely. But did you notice what she was doing? In what? In terms of what? Her expression on her face. Yeah, she had a bit of. She she was smirking a lot, wasn't she? Smirking way too much for my liking. Yeah. Um. I've, I've, we've noticed a few times when we've kind of stopped this to record our commentary that. You know, half of the times we've stopped it, she's had this sly little smirk, this this snidey little, you know, smile on her face. God, she's vile. Yeah, she's despicable. Um, she doesn't feel any guilt about what is going on. <laughs> she's got no guilt, that's why. Yeah. But she's been worn down by this guy, and uh, it's just joyous. It's just joyous to watch because... He's breaking her defences down bit by little bit. She's still looking smug. She's still looking, you know, very, yeah, you know, you're, you know, I'm more than a match for you, but she doesn't know the half of it, does she? No, and I can't wait till he breaks her. No, me neither. Right, shall we see what the afternoon session has in store for us? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Please be seated. Sirius, please take the stand. <clears throat> Record will show the presence of the defendant and all counsel. Ms. Arias, when responding to questions, be sure that you let Mr. Martinez finish his question before you start to speak. The court reporter cannot take down two people at one time. Yes, ma'am. All right. Now, don't do it again. Please stand for the jury. Please be seated. The record will show the presence of the jury, the defendant, and all counsel. 
And to sustain the last objection, Mr. Martinez, you may continue. Ma'am, uh, we were talking about the car rental uh, in Redding, California, and you ultimately uh, were given a second car, correct? Yes. And this, the color of this car was white, correct? Yes. And that was more to your liking because of this issue involving the traffic citations, correct? Yes. And uh, this uh, car had an, a capacity of over 12 gallons per, uh, uh, per tank full, correct? Um, it was 10 or 12. I don't remember. Well, okay. Do you remember, this is exhibit 237.018. Do you remember uh, filling up with gas in Winnemucca, Nevada? Um, I remember running out of gas in Nevada. And when you say that you ran out of gas, there was absolutely no gas in your car or you were just running low? Um, it was, the gas light was on, so. When you say that the gas light was on, it doesn't mean that you are, you're not moving. It means that, that, that you are low on gasoline, correct? Yeah, it was kind of below. Uh, below are you saying that that's what, where it happened in Winnemucca, Nevada? No, I was probably, I think he said I was 15 or 20 miles from there. And you were able to make it to Winnemucca, correct? No, I pulled over. And you pulled over and did what? Um, I went in and asked the guy where the nearest gas station is. He said it's about 15 miles. I think he said 15 miles further. I didn't think I would make it on E, so um, I went and started putting gas in the car, and he came out and assisted me. And you were putting gas from what? From one of the gas cans. All right. And let's just take a look at this exhibit right here. And it indicates that it's your name, right? Yes. It's from Winnemucca, right? Uh, yes. And it indicates that the amount that you uh, purchased was 12.175 gallons, right? Yes. And you paid $49.91, correct? That's right. And this issue involving you running out of gas, that's not something that you told us on direct examination, correct? Yes, no, I was not. And was not. Um, so you have this car that has at least a capacity of 12 gallons, correct? Approach. Ma'am, yeah, with regard to what I'm up there, you filled up your car with gas, didn't you? Yes, I put gas in it. All the way till it was full, right? Um, I probably, because I usually filled up until the nozzle yes no? clicked. Yes or no, in Winnemucca, did you fill it up with gas? I put gas in it. I probably filled it up. So you're saying that you're not sure if you filled it up all the way with gas then, right? That's right. But you did make a purchase in Winnemucca, pursuant to Exhibit 237.018, in which 12.175 gallons were purchased by you, right? Yes. And so it could be that the gallon, that the tank was 15 gallons of gas, right? That's speculation. A world, you may answer. Right? That's possible. But at least we know that this gas tank could hold at least 12.175 gallons of gas, right? Right. We know there's, you know, countless dozens of you out there that have watched this trial, you know, until it's got hairs on it. But um, this is our first time. The receipts have been kind of detailed already and admitted into evidence, haven't they? Yeah, they have. But we're still a bit sketchy on what she bought, when, and where she bought it from. So, um, you know, with this, we were just kind of wondering if she'd actually filled the car up or if she'd filled one of the gas tanks. But it would appear she filled the car up with this. Yeah, I think that's more likely. I think she filled the gas tanks in California, didn't she? Yeah, I think that's where she said uh, the petrol was better when it was really dear. On yeah, it was dear. Yeah, so um, yeah, it's coming back to me now. Apologies, guys. And uh, before you went on this trip, um, on it started on June second of two thousand and eight, correct? Yes. Started around five o'clock in the morning, correct? Um, it was early in the morning, around uh, that time. Because you were at Reading at eight a.m., correct? Um. Yes. Well, we saw the receipts. Were you here when the receipts were shown of you renting the car at approximately 801? Yes, I was here. And so if you, it takes you one to two hours to drive down there, that would mean you have, would have to get up pretty early, right? 
Um, yes. And so you got up pretty early, you drove down to uh, Reading, but in anticipation of that, you actually called somebody by the name of Daryl Brewer, right? Um, yeah, and I'm sorry, I didn't get up early. I was up all night. So. Pardon? I, you said I got up early. I just wanted to make that clear. I was up all night. So. Okay, so what you're saying is you didn't <clears throat> sleep that night, right? I didn't sleep that night, no. Okay. She can remember having a sleepless night, but she can't remember who picked her up and dropped her off to rent the car. Yeah. It's very convenient, isn't it? Very convenient for her. So, but you did, in anticipation of this trip, contact an old boyfriend, right? Yes. And that would be Daryl Brewer, right? Yes. You made a, a number of telephone calls to him, correct? Um, probably. And when you say probably, it means that you're not sure, right? Um, I'm not sure, no. So, you at least made two calls to him though, right? Um, if that's what my phone records reflect, then that would be right. Now I'm asking what your memory reflects. I don't remember actually calling him before leaving on my trip. And so you have no idea as to whether or not you even called him before you went on the trip then, right? Um, I don't recall. Well, I've, of course I called him before the trip, but I don't know how soon before the trip. And I think one of these calls was to ask him about the gas cans, wasn't it? I think it was, yeah. Yeah. So you don't remember whether or not it was in May then, is that what you're saying? I did talk to him in May. And it was toward the end of May, correct? Probably. And when you keep saying probably, it means that you're not sure, but that you do not um, deny that you made a call, right? That's right. And so you made this call with, to him at the end of May, and you asked him whether or not he had any spare gas cans for you to use, right? That sounds right. No, I'm not asking what sounds right. Is that what you did? Um... I think I did, because he's the one I ended up borrowing them. Well, ma'am, are you having trouble again with your memory with regard to events then? Yeah, because there were a few different... Um, so like, the answer is yes. You are having trouble with your memory. With that question. Well, are you having trouble... It's, it's not the only question that you've had trouble with. Are you having trouble with the memory of the events leading up to your trip? Leading up to... Yeah. I feel okay. A little bit. And, and um, you would agree then that the events leading up to your trip were probably the end of May uh, and the murder was, or the killing was on June 4th of 2008. So are you saying that that whole period you're having problems with your memory or is it just the end of May? Um, well, there are some things I recall and some things I don't. So my question is, are you having trouble with both or just the end of May? I'd say my whole life is like that, so both. So you're saying that you're having trouble remembering everything or events throughout your life. Is that what you're saying? Some things, not everything. And sometimes um, you, you know what you can remember very well and sometimes you can't. Is that what you're saying? You are one pathetic loser. You mean can't at all or can't remember well? can't remember both um, well or, or at all yeah Tell all, me. all of the above and so at the end of May then you're saying that you really don't remember whether or not you made a telephone call to Mr. Brewer is that what you're saying um I don't remember specifically but I know I called him at one point all right and you did call him because you wanted to talk to him about some gas cans right um that wasn't the purpose of the call well that was what this was discussed during that call correct Um, I think so, yes. You're saying you think so? Yes, correct? That's yes. What and so, um, one of the things that you told him in discussing these gas cans was that you were going to take a trip, right? Um, yes. And that the purpose for the gas cans was so that you could put gas in it, right? Yes. And um, the other thing that you told him was that the trip that you were going to make was going to be to Mesa, Arizona, right? No. You were here when he testified, correct? Yes. And um, he's somebody that you've had a, I guess, a long-term relationship with, correct? Yes, about four and, years. Pardon? About four years we were in a relationship. Right, and then even after that, you have had, if not a close friendship, you've had a friendship after you got, the two of you split, correct? Um, it was more distant, but it was still a friendship. Sure, and in fact, you felt comfortable. You still remembered his number, right? Telephone number, right? Yes. 
and you felt comfortable enough to ask him for a favor, right? Um, certain favors, yes. Well, that particular favor, you felt comfortable in asking him for that, right? Which one? The gas cans? Well, which other favor are we talking about? Are there more than one favor here that we've talked about? I want to know what you're talking about. No, I'm asking you. Do you remember that we started talking about gas cans? Do you remember that? Yes. That we've talked of nothing else other than gas cans so far. Is there anything else that you believe that we've talked about? I wasn't sure that's why I asked. I thrive on misery. Ma'am, is there anything else that we have talked about? I'm not sure that's why I asked. I'm asking you, is there anything else that has been posed to you other than this gas can issue involving Mr. Brewer? Yes. Sustained. Now, you have this conversation with him involving the gas cans. It is more than one conversation, isn't it? I don't remember. And there could be more than one conversation. It's what you're telling us, right? Yes. And uh, are you saying you did not tell him that you were going to go to Mesa um, when you spoke to him? That's right. I told him after. I'm asking you, the question is this. Isn't it true that before you went on the trip, you told him you were going to Mesa? No, that is not true. All right. Isn't it true that as part of uh, one or another conversation that you had, you told him that you were going to go to Arizona to visit some friends? No, I said Utah. You didn't. I'm asking you whether or not it's true that you told him that you were going to Mesa to visit some friends before you took the trip. No, I said Utah. I'm not asking you what you said, am I? Oh. Yeah, I think you are. To be fair, she's actually right there because um, he asked her what she told Daryl. So yes, he, you know, he is asking her what she said, but you know, the, the, the fact still remains that she's obfuscating the issue again. Yeah, but all she had to say was a yes or no. She didn't have to go off on again, Chris, like she does. Chris, you know that's impossible for her, don't you? <laughs> I think Martinez knows that too. Yeah. You, you're thinking, my question to you is asking you what, what, what you told them. Is that what you think it is? Whether or not you told them that you were going to go to Utah? Do you think that that's what the question was? No. The question was, isn't it true, ma'am, that you discussed with Mr. Brewer before the trip that you took that you were needed the gas cans to go and visit friends in Mesa, Arizona? What is your answer to that? My answer is no, I told him Utah. And I'm asking you whether or not you think I'm asking you what you told him. Am I asking you what you told him? That's kind of my interpretation of it. It's a yes or no question. It is a yes or no question, isn't it? And I answered no three times, yes. Okay. And you also added something three times, didn't you? Yes, the truth. Am I asking you whether you're telling the truth? You have asked me that. Am I asking you right now if you're telling the truth? I don't know, are you? Well, I, did you, have you heard that question prior to you saying that? Um, yes. You heard that question immediately before I'm telling the truth. The prosecutor asking you if you were telling the truth, you heard the prosecutor say that. Not immediately. Pardon? Not immediately. So the answer is yes or no. Did you hear the question immediately before you gave the answer that you were telling the truth? No, not immediately. So you did have these conversations with Mr. Brewer and you decided to get the gas cans. Why don't you just go and buy some gas cans? They were expensive. And when you say they were expensive, how much is a gas can do you use? I don't remember, but it wasn't in my budget for my travels. Um, and you wanted two of them, right? Um, I don't know, I guess, whatever you had. So if you would have had six, you would have taken six? No, they wouldn't have fit. And these gas cans, when you picked them up, where did you put them? Um, in the trunk. In the back? Yes. So you rented this car, and uh, this car had some floor mats, correct? No, it did not. So then you get into this car, and you pick it up, you go back to sleep, right? Uh, yes, back at my brother's house. I didn't ask you where, did I? No. I asked you if you went back to sleep, right? Yes. So you went back to sleep, and at some point, you then started to go on your trip for reals, right? Okay, yeah. <laughs> Have you seen how belligerent she's becoming? Even more belligerent than she, she has been before. She's trying to think she's in control, but she's not. Yeah, she hasn't got the first clue. Um... <laughs> 
I think before this day is done, we may see her kind of crack. I mean, I know that, you know, next episode, part 29, we're going to see a crack. Yeah, but Martinez is good at doing it. Yeah, yeah. Um, he, he is being very pedantic, but he's being pedantic for a reason because she keeps embellishing her answers with stuff that nobody asked her about. No, I, was, I don't understand why she has such a problem with saying yes or no. Because she's a stupid swamp donkey, thick-headed twat, that's why. All right, and about what time was that? Um, I want to say late morning, but I'm not too sure. And you then drove south till you got to the Monterey, California area, correct? I stopped again and slept and then continued driving south. What did you say? I stopped again and slept and then I continued driving south. Um, did anybody ask you, where you whether or not you slept? Um, well, you just asked me. I asked you whether or not you slept. Is that what my question was? Yes, you asked if I went to sleep. No, I asked you, when you started your trip, did you make it to Monterey, California? Do you remember me asking you that? I remember you asking something like that, but not worded that way. When you say something like that, again, it seems that you have a problem with your memory. Do you have a problem with your memory today? Not in this particular case. Okay, so after you woke up, after sleeping at your sister's house, did you begin your trip? Yes. And did you eventually make it to the Monterey, California area? Yes. And what time did you get there? Um, it was very, very late. I think it was even the third in the morning because we had stopped in Santa Cruz first. So you got there on the third, you believe, but in any event, it was late, correct? Yeah, it was past midnight, I think, by the time we got to Monterey. And um, so in terms of miles, how many miles are we talking about? From where to where? From the place that you left your sister to Monterey, wherever it is that you went, and you arrived around midnight or after, or in the early morning hours of June 3rd? Well, I'm not particularly sure. I'd say somewhere in the ballpark of 500 miles. And so... I know more by hours, not miles. Okay. How many hours then? From Reading to Santa Cruz, it was approximately six and a half to seven hours. And in Santa Cruz, did you meet anybody? Yes. And that's where you met Mr. McCartney, correct? Yes, and his roommate. And did I ask you again if you met his roommate? You asked if I met anybody. No, I asked you if you met Mr. McCartney. Do you remember that question? Yes, and I answered yes. Does she honestly believe she's being helpful by embellishing um, her answers, or is she just being a completely irritating bastard on purpose, do you think? She's being... She's being irritating, I think. Yeah, I do as well. We will throw that get open to you as well, guys. And so you met Mr. McCartney, um, and you spent the night at a place where he was living, right? Yes. And what time did you get up the next morning? I don't remember, but it would have been in the morning. I understand it was the morning. Would it have been really early, or would it not be so early in the morning? It would have been before Jack had to go to school, so whatever time that was, it couldn't have been too late. What time did Jack have to go to school? I don't remember. And so, did you have plans already to meet up with Mr. McCartney, or is it a situation where you got on the phone on the road, called him up, and said, hey, I'm coming down there, can we meet? It was definitely beforehand, because I was going to crash there. So, when did you speak to him beforehand? Was it a week or so before? Was it... Uh, days before you left, what was it? Um, I don't know. We spoke here and there. I don't know. All right. And uh, did Mr. McCartney go with you the next morning to meet with Mr. Brewer? No. So you did go over to Mr. Brewer's house, and one of the reasons that you went over was to talk to or see Jack, the son, right? That was one of the reasons. And you also had breakfast there, correct? Yes. And you also checked your email there, correct? And I bet you, while she was at it, she checked Daryl's email and Jack's email as well. Um, I think it was my MySpace Pardon? email. Yeah, my, what was my MySpace account? I well, when checked. you say that you checked your MySpace account, is your email included in the MySpace account? Um, there is an email system, but not my main email. I'm asking if you checked 
your, when you checked your MySpace account, did you check any email in the MySpace account? I don't remember. Did you check, you mentioned that you had another email system. Did you check that other email system? I don't remember, probably not. I think it was just MySpace. And what was the purpose for checking that, the MySpace account? Um, hadn't done it in a few days, so. And so you check that and then at some point you get some gas cans, right? Yes. And when in this whole sequence of events do you get the gas cans? Um, sometime while I was visiting with him. I don't remember how it happened. Was it before or after Jack left for school? I don't remember. And what color were the gas cans? They were red. And where did you put them? In the trunk. And that would be in the back, correct? Yes. Uh, where was your luggage? In the trunk. Same place with the same area as the gas cans? Yes. And how, long, how much time do you spend there with Mr. Brewer? Um, I don't know. I think it was somewhere like a half hour it felt like. I don't really remember. And then uh, you leave, right? Yes. But you come back again, right? Yes. To return a remote, right? Right. What kind of remote are you returning? Um, it was for either his TV or his DVD player, I think. How is it that it found its way into your car? I don't know. I think that it Well, was... don't speculate. You don't know, right? No, it was already with him. I drove away with it on accident. I don't know how I got it. I think she probably nicked it just for shits and giggles, don't you? Of course she did. But then, probably someday, you know, some way down the road, she probably thought, oh, well, how's Jack going to watch his, his shows? So that's why she probably turned back and skedaddled back and gave it back. <laughs> yeah. But she, like I said, she probably did it for shits and giggles, just as a sadistic kind of thrill, probably. Wouldn't, yeah. wouldn't put it past her, would you? Well, no, but don't forget, she's so immature. Yeah, yeah. All right. And then um, after you returned it, you drove to Salinas, right? Yes. And in Salinas, you did a number of things, right? Um, not really. I just did a few things. Pardon? I just did a few things. Right. You did your nails, right? Uh, yes. And you said it took a, a quite a while, right? Um, I had to wait for a while. Yes. In other words, the doing of the nails didn't take a long time. The fact that you probably didn't have an appointment is what took some time, right? Yes, there are no appointments there. And uh, then you left Salinas and continued your trip, right? And this would be on the 3rd, right? That's correct. About what time was it? Um, it was afternoon, but I don't know what time. You told us about the gas cans from Mr. Brewer, right? That's right. But you forgot to tell us something else, didn't you? You haven't asked me yet. Come and have a go if you think you're hard enough. Well, isn't it true that there was more than two gas cans involved here, yes. right? Yes. And you testified on direct examination involving the gas cans, didn't you? Yes. And you never testified about a third gas can, did you? No. And this third gas can, you actually bought it in Salinas, didn't you? Yes. And you bought it from Walmart, didn't you? Um, yes, I did. And not a, now, not only do you have two five-gallon gas cans, you have another gas can. How many, what's the capacity of this one? Um, it was the same size, no, I think it was, I don't know, it was the same size, I think. You think it was, so now you have a capacity of 15 gallons, right? At that moment, I did. Well, you're saying like at that moment. Did the uh, size of these gas cans change so that it would go from a 15-gallon capacity down to a lesser capacity? The sustaining ejection. With regard to, you keep saying that at that point you had that capacity. Was there something involving these gas cans that would not allow you to fill them up to their capacity later on? Um, yes, there was. And what is that? I returned the gas can. You returned it back, right? Yes. You full of shit. You understand that? You full of shit. So that you now have a capacity of still 10 gallons, right? Um, yes. Maximum, right? Yes. So then why is it, ma'am?
that when you go to the Arco, you fill up with gas. Do you remember that? Yes. And then you go inside and exhibit number 237.012. Do you see that there? Uh, yes. That's a capacity of 10 gallons, right? Um, or approximately, it's 9.5494 gallons, right? Yes. And then 237.013, it's 2.77 gallons, right? Um, the, where does it say that? Oh, yeah, I see that. So you're saying that these gas cans then have a larger capacity now? I don't know what the capacity was. Well, you remember Mr. Brewer saying they were five gallon gas cans, right? Um, I don't know if he said that or not. You were here when he testified, right? I was physically here, yes. Sometimes I space out. Pardon? I was physically here, yes. Sometimes I space out. I find that quite hard to believe. Yeah, me too, definitely. If you think about it, um, Daryl testified, I think it was day 11 of the trial. I think it was part 15 of our series. Now, Jodie has been waiting four years for this. This is her day in court. She is on trial for her life. And her ex-boyfriend is testifying for the defence. But there is a big thing for her in this, which is the gas can. Are you telling me she is spaced out while Daryl is testifying? I don't think so, do you? She was hanging on every word he was saying. Yeah. She didn't space out once. No. And so you're saying that throughout the trial you may have spaced out and not paid attention to what's going on? Um, during other people's testimonies, sometimes my mind wanders. So the answer is yes? Um, yes. And you don't remember then specifically what Mr. Brewer may have said, is that what you're saying? I remember some things he said. But, but not everything. Not every single thing. Well, 237.011. Do you see that it says Arco and it's in Pasadena? Yes. Do you see the address there? Um, yes. What's the address? Read it for me. 3706 East Foothill Boulevard. And the city and Pasadena, state? Pasadena, California, 92553. And it does talk about a debit account. You see that? Yes. It talks about a date of June 3rd, 2008, right? Yes. And a time of 8.42 p.m., right? Um, yes. And then it talks about being at pump number two. Do you see that? Yes. And it, then it talks about the amount of gallons that are involved, right? Yes. Do you know something, sweetheart? I love American colloquialism sometimes. Um, one is there with a the receipt and he's saying, and it talks about the pump number. And I'm just thinking, f*** me, a talking receipt. <laughs> <laughs> that would be quite funny. It would be funny. Showstopper. 8.301 gallons. And there's the price there, right? Yes. That is for you filling up the car, isn't it? Um, I don't know. Well, you were there though, right? Yes. And this is first in the sequence at 8.42 p.m., right? He, yes. And you don't know whether or not this is part of filling up the car with gas then? I don't remember what order. I All right, that. well. Don't believe that either. I think that before she went into that gas station, she knew exactly what she was gonna fill up with how much um, and how much she was gonna spend. Yeah, but she didn't know at that time that those receipts would be discovered no she didn't but she was foolish enough to keep them wasn't she she was what a Vera. what a prat you remember that we we're talking about two five gallon gas cans right yes five plus five is ten right that's right this is 8.301 do you see that yes so this is not the capacity, if you will, of the up to 10 gallons for those two gas cans, correct? It has that capacity, so that's not correct. It's not the maximum capacity. No, it isn't, right? So that's there's right. no reason to believe that this could be the gas cans 
if, if you're going to take these gas cans, presumably you're going to fill them up to the top, right? Objections. Restate your question. Why are we, you were taking those gas cans for a reason, right? Yes. And that was to have extra gas, right? Um, originally it was. Yes or no? Was it to have extra gas available to you? At one point, yes. At another point, no. Well, and if you want to have extra gas available to you, don't you want to have the maximum amount? Um, I guess. Well, no, you were driving. You're the one that asked to borrow these gas cans. If you have two, five, let's just say 10 gallons of uh, space available and you want to make sure that you have enough gas, wouldn't you fill it up to approximately 10 gallons? I don't know. Now, compared to the States, we live on a tiny, infinitesimal island, don't we? We do, very small. So you'd probably be able to drive from Land's End to John O'Groats. You'd probably have to go through two tanks, but you'd, you know, you'd do it on two tanks. And that's probably most cars, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so we wouldn't really need gas cans over here. So we don't speak from experience here, do we? But... I think if I was going on a long trip, say something like seven, eight hundred miles, maybe over a thousand miles, I'd want to be sure I would have enough fuel. So yes, as a practical driver and as someone who used to drive a taxi for a living, I would fill both gas cans up to the top. To a, it, it's logic, isn't it? Well, it is logic. I think I, I would do the same. I mean, you don't want to run out of gas in the middle of nowhere, do you? No, you don't. But as ever, logic evades Jody as does emotion, reason, and any sort of empathy. Ma'am, what's going on is that exhibit 237.001 is you filling up that Ford Focus with gas, isn't it? I don't remember if what order I filled up. And this was at 8.42 p.m., right? Yes. And you went and you pumped your own gas, didn't you? Yes. And then after, and you paid with a debit card, do you see that? Yes. You had a MasterCard back then, right? Um, I don't remember what it was, MasterCard or Visa. But you paid for that with a credit card or Visa or, or MasterCard, whatever it was, right? Yes. With regard to the gas that you purchased inside, which is 237.012, you paid cash, right? That's right. And cash is harder to track in terms of sales than a credit transaction. Wouldn't you agree? Not if you save the receipt. Not if you save your receipt. What if you don't save your receipt, ma'am? Wouldn't you agree that a cash transaction is harder to keep track of than a credit transaction? Yes, I would agree with that. And in this case, you initially said, I want to pay $40, right? Yes. And then it's the amount of gallons that you got for that was 9.594 gallons, correct? Yes. And that was the $40, right? Um, yes. Do you see the time there? Uh, that would be 10.53. Well, how about 8.46.50 if we... You see the 204650, wouldn't that be 84650? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. That's correct. And that is four minutes after the transaction in 237.001. Do you see that? Um, yes. Wait, what was the other time? I'm sorry. There's 842. Okay. Do you see that? Yes. 84650. Do you see that? Uh, yes. I was mm -hmm. sorry, I was looking at the other time on the top. Do you see that right there? Yes. It's 8, 8.46.50, right? Okay. So that's four minutes after the transaction. That's the debit transaction, right? Yes. And then you have 237.013. It's the same article, right? Yes. And this one is at what time? This one is at... Time was it? How about 8:53? 53, yes. And that's five minutes later than the transaction involving the 
approximately 10 gallons of gas, right? Yes. And during that time, uh, that five minutes, that would allow you to go from the inside out to your car again, wouldn't it? Five yes. minutes. It was that close, correct? Yes. And the time span between exhibit 237.001, which is 842, to the next one, which is 846, which is four minutes, that would give you time to go back between the car and the, um, the register or inside the store, correct? Yes. And so now, we know that at that particular gas station, you spent 237.01, 011, I'm sorry. It's $35 there, right? Uh, yes. And six cents, but let's leave the cents aside. And 237.012, that's $40. So far you spent $75 in gas, right? Yes. And then if you add from 237.013, if you add nine, because we're rounding up, mm -hmm. you're now talking $84 in gas that you spent, right? Um, I don't know, I'm not good at math, but okay. Assuming the math is correct, is Assuming the price, the math is correct. it's between 80 and $84 in gas that you spent, correct? Yes. And so you, you, you've now driven all the way down there, and one of the reasons that you told us on direct examination that you wanted these gas cans was that gas was cheaper in Arizona and Utah. Do you remember telling us that on direct? No, I said Nevada and Utah. I'm not even going to address that pedantic little quip that she just made there about Nevada, but um, it's just occurred to me that if Jody would have made all of these purchases in one transaction, i.e. just use the pump to fill... Um, the gas cans, if she'd have been, been a bit more organized, then Juan Martinez's job would have been a lot harder. Um, he would have obviously questioned how um, what she, she had spent would have exceeded what was be able to pull in the car. He would have put two and two together about the gas cans. But if she hadn't have saved those receipts and she'd have done this all in one purchase, she just might, she just might have gotten away with this. Yeah, but then again, Jodie didn't really have a plan. She didn't plan anything out. No, she didn't. I mean, the mistakes that she made, three different... I mean, that's going to put a red flag up, you know what I mean, to someone. Well, definitely. It, it's going to put a red flag up, um, someone coming in like three times, making three different purchases. You're going to think, why is he do doing that? You know, why is she doing that? I don't know. It's just weird, isn't it? The, the world turns on a dime. And if she hadn't have done those two things, she could be walking free. It's frightening, isn't it? It's very frightening, but that's Jody for you. Yeah. All right. Gas is cheaper in Nevada and Utah, right? Yes. You weren't filling up in Nevada or Utah, were you? No. You were filling up in California, right? Yes. Where the gas is as expensive there as it is probably throughout the state, right? No. Or well, well, it was expensive in California, isn't it? More than Nevada and Utah, yes. And so you had actually, and, and California is kind of a progressive state in the sense that it has gas, gas stations almost everywhere, doesn't it? Injection foundation relevance. Restate your question. On your travels on that date, you went from the Monterey area down to Salinas. Any trouble seeing any gas stations there? No. From Salinas all the way down to Pasadena. Any problem seeing any gas stations there? No. So it seems that your fears about gas in California were not well founded then, right? There was gas in places that you were traveling in California, right? I didn't have any fears in California then, so no. You had, you had fears somewhere else, correct? Yes. Arizona, for example, right? Um, no. Well, you did end up going through Arizona, right? Yes, I did. And so presumably, um, is that where the fears were in Arizona? No, I'd driven that highway many times. I knew where the gas stations were there. So you didn't really have a need for gas if you were going to drive through Arizona, then, right? No, that, I mean, that's right, yes. Pardon? That's right. And um, you were telling us, though, that approximately every 150 to 170 miles, your car was running out of gas. Do you remember telling us that? 150 to 170 miles? Yes, ma'am. I don't remember saying that. 
Well, do you remember that you said that you had problems with the, that your Ford Focus had problems with gas, that it was using too much gas on direct examination? I remember running out quickly, yes. Well, you told us that this car, the Ford Focus, was using uh, an inordinate amount of gas, correct? No, that wasn't my thought. I just... Well... It ran out of gas quickly. You told us that from Pasadena, then you, uh, you, you, you filled up at Desert Center, right? Yes. That's approximately 170 miles down the road, right? I don't know. Well, you drove it. It sounds right. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Dave, ask another question. And after that, you then said that you drove out to Buckeye and you filled up there, right? Yes. That's approximately another 170 miles, right? Yes, Foundation. Overruled. Um, I guess. Well, you, you did drive that, though. You yes, did tell did. us that, right? Yes. And you told us that both of those times you filled up, right? Yes. And you filled it, that car up with 12 gallons of gas approximately every time, right? Whatever it would have been, I filled up, I think. Well, if you were running low, we've already seen the capacity, then it would be approximately 12 gallons, wouldn't it? Um, yes, I guess. Distinct. Ma'am, you said that you filled up in Winnemucca, right? And your car was low, right out of gas, right? Um, it did not run out of gas. I was on, I was low. Oh, so it didn't run out of gas, and yet you were able to put over 12 gallons worth of gas in Winnemucca, correct? Um, that's correct. And so if you are running low on gas in Desert Center, that would mean that you would put approximately 12 gallons worth of gas, right? Approximately. And then from that point over to Buckeye, you said you put gas into the car again, right? Yes, I did. So that would mean that you would put another 12 gallons worth of gas in the car if it was running low, based, based on the previous computations. Overall, do you mean? Um, if you base it on those computations, but that's, I stopped in Buckeye because the Shell station there always had cheap gas. I'm not asking you whether or not it had cheap gas, right? <coughs> Am I? Um, no. Do you remember that on direct examination, the way you prefaced this was that, oh, this car used an inordinate or a lot of gas. Do you remember telling us that portion? Yes. And that as a consequence of that, do you remember telling us that you stopped at Desert Center, right? And yes, put gas in it. Yes, I did. And then you also said, and because of this problem that it was running low on gas, you also stopped in Buckeye, right? You told us that, yes, right? Yes, I did. So if this car is running low on gas, that means that it's close to empty, right? Yes. And so that would mean that if it's close to empty, it would be around 12 gallons that you put at Desert Center inside the car tank, right? Approximately. Approximately. And then it would be another 12 gallons worth of gas there at Buckeye, right? Presumably, yes. Well, given the computations that we have going. And then you made your way over to Mesa, right? Um, yes, I did. And how long did it take you to get to Mesa? That hour of the morning, not long because there was no traffic. And how much gas did you use? I don't know. And all the while you have these gas cans full of gas, right? Um, yes, I did. And because you filled up in Pasadena, correct? Yes. And where did you put these uh, gas cans? They were in my trunk. And again, in the back part of the trunk? Yes. And you maintain that this third uh, gas can, that you did not have a third gas can then, right? No, not at that time. When you keep saying that at that time, I'm asking after Salinas, you did not have that gas can, right? That's correct. Take a look at 237.008. Do you see that? Um, Do you see the receipt? Yes. And at the very bottom it says 5G. That actually means 5 gallons, right? Yes. Carol Carb is the type of gas can, correct? Uh, yes. And it's 1296, right? E yes. Ma'am, at the time that you bought it, one of the things that you were telling us was that you were very financially strapped, for lack of a better phrase, right? That's right. So if you want to save on gas, which is on the price of gas, which is what you say is your ultimate goal, right? 
Um, at the time that I wanted gas cans, that was my ultimate goal. Right. So that was your ultimate goal at the time that you talked to Mr. Brewer, right? That's correct. So if you want to save on gas, why is it then that you're willing to pay $13 for a gas can, which would increase, if you will, the price of travel? Because the lights are on, but no one's home, but you can't even see the bloody lights for the raisins. <laughs> well, by $13. That wasn't a calculation that I made when I bought it. That's why I returned it. Do you have the receipt that, that you took it back? I didn't get a receipt. So uh, Walmart did not give you any documentation whatsoever when you took that gas can back? I don't think so. Yeah, she was stupid for keeping the receipts, but she did have the foresight to pay cash for that third gas can. Yeah, if she'd have paid for it on her credit or debit card, then if it was refunded, then the charge would have been reversed. So they would have had a paper trail there. So yeah, it is, you know, quite good foresight of her to pay for it by cash. So in that way, I guess she knew what she was doing. Well, I'm asking you just whether, I just want to be as clear as we can about this. Do you believe that when you took that gas can back, Walmart did not give you any written document evidencing that or showing that? I don't recall having okay. to fill anything out or any documents regarding that, no. You weren't even given a printout or anything at all, right? I'm not saying that, I'm just saying I don't remember. I don't know about America, but I don't know about American retail law, but usually in the UK, and you know this because you've worked in retail, haven't you? Yeah. And so have I. Um, when you get a refund, especially in cash, you have to sign something. You have to sign some kind of chitty, some kind of receipt to say that you have requested this refund. Um, and it's basically the proof of it, isn't it? Yeah, but also it's so uh, the till balances at the end of the night because everything goes through that. So if she had returned it, she should have got some sort of return goods receipt or something. Yeah, and the, she has a copy and the store keeps a copy. Exactly. And I think um, during Juan Martinez's um, the, you, you know, presentation of the case, he said that uh, Walmart had no record of any sort of receipt that she had signed or anything, any, anything otherwise with regards to this. So... <laughs> We know she is talking absolute pooties, don't we? Of course we do. It's stuffed down the toilet. <laughs> and you would agree, though, that if you bought the gas can and it was approximately $13, it would not make any financial sense if you were looking to save for gas, correct? I do agree with that. And the other thing is, if you're looking to save for gas and you're trying to do this, wouldn't it have made more sense to have filled up in Pasadena than driven up to Nevada, if that's where you were going, and once you get to Nevada, fill up the gas cans? Wouldn't it have made more sense then? Yes, it would have if that was my goal. Well, your goal at that time when you were filling up was to travel up to Utah, didn't you tell us that? Yes. So, you didn't do that though, right? I did not end up going directly to Utah. I'm not saying whether or not you ended up going directly to Utah. At the time that you filled up this, these cans, your plans were to go to Utah, weren't they? Yes. Because of the time on there, correct? Yes. Previously you had told us that you didn't speak to Mr. Alexander until after that, right? That's right. In fact, you were at, um, getting some coffee or something, right, at, this, at Starbucks, something like that, or some drink at Starbucks, correct? Yeah, strawberry drink. Right, at Starbucks, right? Yes. And so, if you are going to go from Pasadena to Nevada, you can make it on a tank of gas, can't you? Um, overall. I've never driven that freeway, so, I mean, this is the USA, so I would guess yes, but I've never driven that road, especially not at night. You didn't think that perhaps all that way from Pasadena to Las Vegas there wouldn't be a, a gas station? Did you believe that that was the case? Um, no, I didn't believe that was the case. So if you really are trying to save on gas, you would have continued driving 
through California until, and filling up in California until you got to Nevada. And then you would have been able to purchase the cheaper gas, right? That was a long question. I'm sorry, we say it again. Well, it would have made more financial sense for you to keep driving from Pasadena northbound, northeastbound, until you got closer to the border, right? That's right. And then when you got to Nevada, then it would have made more sense to fill the gas cans, right? Financially, yes. And that was your goal, correct? At the time I got the gas cans, that was my goal. Your goal changed, apparently, is what you're saying, right? Um, I still wanted to save gas, but my priority changed. Yeah, but then your goal changed to become a murderous monkey spunk, didn't it? Okay, and so with regard to exhibit number 237.012, this is the one that's approximately 10 gallons, and then 237.013, it's approximately 2.7 gallons, you see that? Yes. You were the person that actually put the gas into the gas cans, right? That's right. And you know that the get one of the gas cans was five gallons, right? Yes. The other was five gallons, right? Well, I believe it was because that's what Daryl said. They, they, they were the same size, weren't they? They were the same size. And so if that's the capacity, the most that each can carry is about 10 gallons, right? Um, yes, I guess. Yeah, you were able to put 10 gallons plus 2.774 gallons in containers, weren't you? Um, no, I think the other one, the 10 gallon, was probably the car. Was what? Probably the car, I would guess. What did you say? Tard? Car. <laughs> so you're saying that this one right here, 237.012, went to the car? That's very possible. And you're saying that the This one right here, 237.001, went into the gas can. Is that what you're saying? That sounds right. Okay. Why are you breaking it up then, this purchase? If you're going to put 10 gallons in the, in, in the, in the gas can, what you're saying is you took, you went to the pump, you put, went to the gas cans, and you put 8.3 gallons worth of gas in it, right? Yes. Then you, and you made that debit transaction, right? Yes. And then you put gas in the car, according to you, right yes. here, mm -hmm. at, at 8.46, right? Right. You went inside to do that, right? Um, I think so, yes. Well, no, it says initial payment. You can't pay at the pump, right? Um, sometimes you can, but I don't well, know about Well, you think you can pay at the pump there, right? Um, if I remember correctly, I don't think, I don't know about ARCO, so... I mean, I prepaid, is what I know. Yeah, you did prepay, and you prepaid inside, didn't you? Objection, ask and answer. Sustained. Well, ma'am, let's just get to the bottom of this. You say that you don't know. It's 237.012. Do you see right here? Oh, yes. Clerk. Well, let me just ask the question. Before we, It's clerk, 2525, right? Yes. That means you went inside, right? Objection. I don't know. I would guess. It says clerk. clerk. Judging from that receipt, um, it wouldn't say clerk if it was pay at pump. It would say something like auto or P at P or something. Um, unless the uh, actual garage owner is a Zager and Evans obsessive. Yeah, I mean, but do you see the look on Wilmot's face? I don't yeah. even think the defence was expecting that. Probably not. No, I mean, she does look suitably... I mean, this has been in Discovery. She's seen this, but, you know, I think Jodie's got a knickers in a twist again. She keeps doing that. And then Juan keeps saying, well, no, hang on, because you said this and this says this. So you're talking crap, love. So, and I'm just loving every sack. Oh, yeah, me too. Well, did you go inside? Um, I know I went inside at one point, but I don't know which payment I went inside for. So... And 237.011, you see a clerk there anywhere? Um, no. And then, 
Four minutes later, I'm, I'm sorry, it's uh, 2046 and 2053, which is seven minutes later. So 237.012, you see the time there, right? 2046, yes. right? Yes. And then 237.013 is 2053, you see that? Yes. Seven minutes later, you go back inside, right? Seven minutes later from seven minutes later the eight gallons from is that twenty forty six. I'm just looking at times here. Um. Okay. Well, no. Do you have to, any reason to doubt the authenticity of these uh, records? No. So seven minutes later, first of all, you go in at eight forty six, and you pay for the gas, right? With cash. Yeah. Yes. Then, you then go back and you pay for more gas, right? Um, yes. And then, before that, at 8.42, you pay for more gas again, right? Yes. You really, what you're doing, man, is actually filling up the two five-gallon gas cans first. Aren't you doing that first? I don't know if I filled them, but I think, I don't remember what order I did. Pull the other one, love. It's got marshmallows and raisins on it. And after you filled that, you filled up the third gas can, didn't you? I didn't have a third. And before you did all of that, you put gas in your car, right? Um, I don't remember what order I did it. After that, well, still in Pasadena, you decided to go to a Starbucks, right? Yes. And that was around 9 o'clock in the evening, right? Somewhere that sounds right. Well, that's what you told us. Can you give us a closer approximation? No. So you go there, and one of the things that you said is that you've got a, what, a strawberry drink, something like that? Yeah, a strawberry frappuccino. And uh, while you were there, you call Mr. Burns, right? Um, I don't know if I called him from Starbucks, but I know we talked a few times that night. And the plan was still for you to go up to Utah, right? Yes. And you, if you were to leave Pasadena at about the time that you said that you were going to leave, you would have arrived up in the West Jordan area at about maybe 10, 11 o'clock the next morning, right? If I drove straight through, I think that's right. It's about a 12-hour drive, I think, is what you testified to, right? That sounds right, yes. But in talking to Mr. Burns, um, you never told him that you were not going to go straight to Utah, did you? Sure. Um, no, because I was going to go. So the answer is no, you didn't, right? No, I didn't tell him that. In any conversations prior to arriving in Mesa that night, or the next morning, you never communicated to Mr. Burns that you were going to take a detour, did you? No, I didn't. And you never contacted Matthew McCartney to tell him that you were going to take a detour, right? Um, I attempted to contact him before I decided to drive out to Mesa, I think. The answer is you didn't let him know, though, right? Um, no, he didn't answer. The bottom line is he didn't know either, right? Mm, that's right. And Mr. Brewer, you didn't call to let him know that either, right? I think I called him too. I called both of them because I couldn't find my car charger or my phone charger. It, wasn't, it was a phone charger. You called both of them, but you didn't let either of them know of the change in plans, correct? Um, say that again. You called both of them at whatever time but you never informed either of them of the change in plans, your supposed change in plans, right? Um, yes, that's correct. One of, the, one of the things that you took on this trip, of course, was, was the gas cans, right? Um, yes, I did. Right. Uh, the other thing that you took uh, when you took this trip was that you also brought a gun, didn't you? Absolutely not. Well, do you remember having a conversation on June 10th of 2008 with Detective Flores of the Mesa Police Department. 
Yes, I do. You initiated that call by calling him first, right? Yes, I did. And after you called him, he called you back, right? Yes. And I think previously you said, well, I called him to sort of find out what was going on with the investigation, right? Yes. That was one of the reasons, right? Yes. You wanted to know what was going on, right? Yes. And during that conversation, you and he discussed a number of things, right? Yes. And during that time that you were talking to him, part of the purpose was, at that time, again, not only to get information, but the way you put it was to also sort of cast suspicion away from you, right? Yes, for the time being, that was Well, fun. that phone call, one of the things, one of your objectives was to get the detective to look somewhere else, right? Not you. Yes. And we know the reasons, but some of the reasons was that you didn't want to be incarcerated or be involved in the prosecution for this particular killing, right? Um, that would be accurate. And so, what you were doing, part of this telephone call, was in your best interest. In other words, you were trying to do things that benefited you, right? Um, I wouldn't put it like that. Well, you were doing things so that he wouldn't see you as a suspect, right? Yes. So if he didn't see you as a suspect, that would benefit you, right? Um, I guess it depends on how you look at it. Well yeah, Martinez is asking her to look at, look at it like a human being, but she's looking at it like a marshmallow-addicted swamp donkey. Yeah, but if you think about it, she's not a human being. Yeah, that's true. Well, no, I'm asking how you would look at it if you don't want him to think of you as a suspect. That's the goal. That's part of the goal, right? That was part of the goal for the call. Right, that was part of the goal for the, uh, for the call. And so you wouldn't say anything, at least... In, in a planned way, you wouldn't say anything that would make it look like you were a suspect, right? Um, I would attempt to not say anything. Right. And, and that's it would be based on the world of knowledge that you had at that time, right? Um, I guess. Well, no. You wouldn't call up and say, oh, I was the person that killed Mr. Alexander. You're not calling to say that, right? No, I wasn't ready to say that. No. And you're not calling to say, you know, you really should look at this part of the desert because that's where I threw the gun, right? No. No, what you were trying to do is you were trying to say, look, I'm giving you all the information that I know so that you can look at somebody else, right? Um, I wasn't thinking of somebody else, just I was thinking not me. But she did, as I recall... Didn't she? She wasn't it one of Travis's roommates or friends? Was it something like Travis Brown? I can't remember. Yeah, she um, did mention one of Travis's room roommates. I just can't remember the name. Yeah, I think it was something like Travis Brown. I'm sure Sue Cavanaugh, Nova Scotia skater, Ruth McFadden, they all know. But yeah, I seem to remember that she tried to point Flores in his direction as opposed to hers. So yeah, she's lying there. Yeah, trying to throw someone else under the bus. Exactly. All right, I'm giving you this information so that you don't look towards me, right? Yes. So when you are doing that, you wouldn't purposely say things to hurt you, would you? Um, hurt your case. I don't know. You think that you would purposely say things to hurt your, your, your case? Probably not. That wasn't really my goal. No, that wasn't your goal. So you really wouldn't, would you? But you, real, right? Um, I didn't consider it my case, but no, I wouldn't say things intentionally to hurt myself. Okay, but you did. You and he did talk about whether or not Mr. Alexander owned a gun, right? Um, yes, I did. And at that time, you did not know that you were being tape recorded, do you? I assumed it was. You assumed it was, but you didn't know, right? Um. I was told it was. Who told you that it was? Did, did the detective tell you in advance? An attorney told me. In advance of you making the call? Um, yes. So you knew before you made the call that your conversation with the detective was going to be taped, right? They said they are, yes. So all the more reason then, knowing that it's going to be taped, it's all the more reason for you to be on the lookout, if you will, or be careful 
to not say anything to, um, you know, incriminate you. Um, yes. Right? And so, knowing that, you still made a statement about a gun, didn't you? Yes, I didn't follow the attorney's counsel. Didn't listen to my attorney's counsel. She's still not listening to her attorney's counsel, is she? Well, no, because she thinks she's got this whole thing wrapped up in one. Yeah, she thinks she's got this in the bag. She ain't. And she will never listen to her attorney's counsel because she is Jodie Arias. I'm, I'm, I'm not asking you whether or not you followed anybody's counsel. I'm just asking you, ma'am, whether or not you made a statement involving a gun. Um, yes, I did. And it isn't like Detective Flores came looking for you, right? Um, you mean physically? Where's my ex? No, called you. He never called you first, right? Um, first, no, he didn't. No, you were the one that actually sought him out, right? Yes. And he returned your call, right? Yes. At that point, for all you knew, he didn't even know that you even existed, for all you knew, right? No, I already knew that he knew. Well, how could you possibly know what he knows, ma'am? I was it's, going off of hearsay. Well, but you, but you don't really... It's what people tell you, but you don't know what he really knows, do you? Um, do I know what he knows inside his head? No, I don't. But I knew that he knew about my name. No, that's what you believe, but you don't know that, right? Um, that's what I... I had a strong belief. All right, and so you made a statement, and that statement is Exhibit 273. Let's listen to it. Do I have to? Yeah. Well, um, can I call you again if I need more information or, or if I have another question? Um, do, you, do you have any questions I can answer for you? Um, yeah, do you know when all this happened? I mean, I got a call last night, but is there any word on... Um, sometime between Thursday and uh, last night. We're, we're not sure yet. We haven't pinpointed yet. Um... And you said that maybe multiple people, because he's a big guy. It was, I mean, maybe you can't talk about this, but was there, um, was there, like, any kind of weapon used, or, um, or was there, was, it, was there a gun? Was there? A I weapon? can't say what type of, of weapon was used, but yeah, I, I, I'm guessing there was a weapon used by the type of injuries that were left behind. Um, do, do you know of him having any weapons at all in the house? Um, his two fists. That's it. Really. No. No, yeah. I, okay. No, no but, handguns or rifles or. No, he wasn't one to keep any of that. But I want uh, fighting he guys did. or anything like that. No. no, he was more into like wrestling and UFC, and he had a, you know, he said he had just bought a punching bag, and yeah. he's like, I love getting the crap out of my punching bag, you know. Um. Yeah, that was you on that recording, correct? Correct. And that was you talking to the detective about whether or not Mr. Alexander had any handguns, right? That's right. And that was you saying at that time, the day after you were notified that his body was discovered, that's you saying, no, he doesn't have any guns, right? Yes, that's right. And that was the truth, wasn't it? No, that wasn't the truth. Why would she lie? Why would she not tell him? Because she's a born liar anyway. Yeah, I know she's a born liar, but I'm trying to figure out why she wouldn't tell Flores that um, Travis had a gun if he had a gun. I mean, we know he didn't. But what possible motivation would she have? I'm sure Martinez will try and pick at that, and I'm sure she will dance around it. Yeah, as always. As always. Are you saying that you lied to him again? Yes. So, whenever it doesn't suit you, it's a lie, right? That's not true. Well, let's review. When you spoke to him back uh, then, in June 10th of uh, 2008, you talked about a lot of other things, right? You talked about what was going on with the case, right? Um, what little he could tell me, yes. And what little you could tell him, right? Um, yes. You talked about 
your relationship with Mr. Alexander, right? Somewhat, yes. Right. We didn't get into a lot of detail. Right. Uh, you talked about <clears throat> potentially when his body was found, right? Or when it happened, right? Yes. And it's clear from what the detective was saying that at that point, he didn't even know when the killing had occurred, right? Um, he gave a time range. Actually, he said Thursday. Do you remember him saying Thursday? Yes. It wasn't Thursday that it happened, right? That's correct. So when he said Thursday, you knew he was wrong, right? I thought he was lying, but yeah. Well, but you know, you knew that was wrong, correct? I knew that was not true. You had all the cards when you called, or you had all the information when you called the detective. Isn't that true? Um, barring my memory gaps, that what I knew, yeah, I had information. You, you knew? You knew that you had been the person that had killed him. You knew that, right? Yeah. The more we go into this case, the more I personally feel that she kind of committed a liberty suicide for herself. I mean, she did not improve her situation, did she? Not by the things she was saying and coming out with three different versions of events. No. I mean, you think about it, right? When um, Flores first starts investigating this, he's made aware of Jody through Travis's friends and roommates um, as maybe a person of interest. And maybe, you know, from this, he considers her maybe a person of interest. And then she's calling him to try and get ahead of herself and, you know, find out what he knows. She just dropped herself further in the doo-doo, didn't she? Yeah, but I think the reason why she was asking about the investigation is because she wanted to see if they suspected her. Yeah, it was all her narcissism. She wanted to know what they knew about her, what they thought about her. She must have seen enough cop shows that, you know, to know that cops play the cards pretty close to the chest when it comes to potential suspects. Maybe apart from Colombo. Yeah. You know, but because he just wouldn't stop pestering you. But just one more thing, you know, they would they wouldn't say, you know, you're a suspect unless asked. But I think Jodie made herself a suspect. I think if she'd have left well enough alone, it would have taken longer for them to, to get her. Don't you think? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I do, too. You know uh, that you had been there on June 4th, right? Yes. You know what had happened when you arrived there, right? Um, yes. So you knew all of that when you were talking to the detective there, right? That's right. And one of the things that you didn't know at that particular time was how the case was going to eventually unfold, how matters were eventually going to unfold, right? Well, I had a good idea. Just what, details You're now. saying you, you had a good idea, but you're not a prognosticator of the future, are you? Prognosticator of prognosticators! Um, no. No one is, right? Hmm, I guess not. I don't know. And so you really didn't know how things were going to unfold. So at that point, you didn't know what was going to be important, right? Um, I wasn't thinking along those lines. Well, you said you had a goal to point the investigation away from you, right? That was one goal, right? For the time being, yes. And then... On the 15th of July, when they spoke to you, you said you weren't even there, right? Um, yes, I did. And then on the 16th, you said it was some other people that... A man and a woman that had come in and done it, right? That's correct. And for the longest time, that's what you maintained, right? For a couple of years, right? Yes. So the point being that back then, you didn't know what your defense was going to be back on June 10th of 2008 when you made that comment. Um, I don't really know what you mean by that. Well, you didn't know it was going to be important back then in 2008, this issue involving the gun, and that's why when he asked you about it, you said, no, he doesn't have any guns. Because it wasn't important at that point because you couldn't foresee the future. That's not why I said that. Well, you said it though, right? Yes, I did. And there was no indication that, um, for example, that it was a lack of sophistication on your part in saying that. Um, it was a calculated statement. No shit, Sherlock. It was a calculated statement, wasn't it? Yes. And it wasn't a situation where it was a technique by the police officer, was it? Objection, officer, speculation. Yes, it was. Mistake. 
Well, one of the things that um, you were, were you here when Detective Flores testified? Yes. And the issue of techniques was discussed, correct? Yes. A at that time, when you called him, you were the person that was actually, for lack of a better term, running the conversation. And she's been trying to do it ever since, and she's still trying to do it. Um, I wouldn't... Again, regarding techniques. Okay. I wouldn't say I was running the conversation. You could have stopped that at any time, right? Yes. If we compare it to July 15th, on July 15th, you couldn't have walked out, right? I could have stopped the conversation, but not walked out. Right. You could have stopped it, but you could have... Whereas in this case, not only could you have stopped the conversation, but you could have walked and done whatever it is that you wanted, right? That day, yes. Right. And that's the day that we're talking about, right? Um, yes. And if you would have wanted to ask him more questions, it's clear that he would have talked to you more, right? Uh, yes. And on that date, on June 10th of 2008, if you would have wanted to tell him that you knew more about it, he would have listened to you, wouldn't he? Yes. Sustained. Do you think, ma'am, that if, in your opinion, that you, based on what you feel about the conversation, do you feel that if you were going to tell Officer Flores about what you knew had happened on June 4th, do you think that you would have been stopped from talking? No, I don't think so. Right, he would have listened to you, right? Yes. Yeah, you made that particular statement on that day, right? Yes. And it's because it, was, it is the truth, right? No, it's not the truth. You and Mr. Alexander never went shooting any guns, right? Uh, no. And you never saw Mr. Alexander with that gun in his hand, ever, did you? Any gun in his hand, right? That's not true. So you did see him with guns in his hand when you were with him? Um, at one time I did, yes. And was, were the guns his? Uh, it was not guns, plural. It was one gun, and it was his. So he had a gun back then? Yes. What, when was this? Um, I discovered it in the fall 2007. No, no, no. I'm asking in terms of Mr. Alexander being the owner of a gun. When do you say that you knew he was the owner of a gun? The fall 2007. Is this the gun that we're talking about that you claim was used in the shooting? It is the one. That's what you claim, right? Um, yes. And with regard to that particular gun, you said that you supposedly found it somewhere. Um, where was the ammunition for it? Um, inside the gun. Okay, so we're from England. Uh, gun control happened here in 1996 after a terrible shooting. It happened, you know, throughout the British Isles, didn't it? Yeah. So, you know, we've never fired a real gun. We've not. We've only probably seen a real gun a handful of times, haven't we? Uh, yeah, in town. So we'd like to ask those of you in countries where, you know, owning a gun is legal, we're, you know, probably saying America here, is it common to keep a loaded gun in a closet or in a cupboard? Because I don't think it is. It's not safe. Well, no. Every, every gun owner knows not to have a loaded gun. Right. And she's trying to tell us that not only did she lie about Travis not having a gun, he did have a gun and it was loaded for bear and she just picked it up and shot him. Because no way would she be able to load any bullets or shells into that weapon and, and then shoot him with the time scale that happened. No, she wouldn't have, but then again, this is Jodie we're talking about. Yeah, born liar, as we've said, but her explanation of this does not make sense. And just bear in mind that if Travis did have a gun or had an interest in guns, then I'm sure that some of his male friends would have mentioned it, and maybe some of his female friends. Yeah, or even his family. But who mentioned it? Nobody. There you go. Inside where? I guess it was inside the gun. Uh, do you even know if it was loaded? He told me it was not loaded. But so, you don't even know if it was loaded, and you claim that he told you it wasn't loaded, right? The, in the fall when I found it, he said it was not loaded. Okay, so you believe it's not loaded, and you haven't received any statements to the contrary, right? No, he took it uh, one night when he was... So you haven't received any statements to the contrary, right? From him, I did receive statements to the contrary. But knowing that then, according to you, now you say that he had a gun in 2007, you got on the phone and you said, no, Mr. Alexander didn't have any weapons. Or no, any guns. You said that specifically, right? Yes. 
And now you come in and you tell us that, yes, he does have guns. Or at least one gun, right? At least one that I, yeah. Right. Um, your grandfather also had guns, didn't he? Yes, he had rifles and shotguns. And he also had smaller guns, too, didn't he? Um, I don't think so. Not you, plural. Okay, he had a small gun then, right? I don't know what it was. Well, do you remember? How small it was. Pardon? I don't know how small it was. Well, was it one of those big, long ones with the big, long barrel? Um, those are the only kinds I'd ever seen. Right, so when you spoke to the detective about the gun that could have possibly been taken in the burglary, you indicated that it was a toy gun. Do you remember telling him that it looked like a toy gun? No, I indicated that's what my grandfather said. Right, and do you have any reason to doubt your grandfather's word? No. So, the gun that was taken, there was a burglary of the house you were staying at back on May 28th of 2008, wasn't there? Yes. Stupid jerk, I mean, what the fuck are you doing robbing your own house, you asshole? And during that burglary, there were certain things that were taken from your room, right? Uh, I think only, yeah, that's What great. was taken from your room? What is it that you reported that was taken? A uh, 10 and $20 bill. So there was a total of $30 that were taken, right? Yes. Yes. There wasn't, your laptop wasn't taken, right? No, my laptop was with me. Well, I thought, do you remember that you actually told the police officers that you were pretty lucky because your laptop was in a hamper sort of thing and the clothes were covering it and it had not been stolen. Do you remember telling that to the officers? No, I remember there was a discussion regarding the laptop and I told him I was lucky that I had it with me because normally I keep it in this hamper. You were here when the officer that went out there testified, right? Yes. And you looked at the photographs, right? Yes. And so you're saying that you actually had the laptop with you, right? Yes. And you were driving around with this laptop, according yes. to you, right? It goes everywhere with me, yes. So you took it everywhere, you didn't leave it behind, right? That's correct. And nothing else was taken from your room, right? Um, that I noticed, yes. Well, you, the officers gave you plenty of time to look around, right? Um, after they were done, like, with their, doing what they do, yeah, I looked around. You're saying that they didn't give you an opportunity to go into your room to see what was missing in order to report it? Is that what you're saying? That's not what I'm saying. So they did allow you to go into the rooms then, into the room. Yes. To look. And you were there until approximately 1 o'clock in the afternoon, right? Um, no. So you were there later? Um, what do you mean by that? I mean, were you there later than 1 o'clock? No. So you were there at 1 o'clock then, right? I was there at 1 o'clock, but I wasn't there like all day the way you asked. Right. I, you were there approximately at 1 o'clock, right? Yes, my sister and I. And before, the, but when the detective or the, the officer testified, was there ever a mention of your sister while you were here? Um, I don't remember if he asked me or not. If he No, no, no. When the officer from Wairika testified, was there ever a mention of your sister? Oh, um, when he testified, no, I don't think so. Not at all, right? No. In fact, what happened was that you were out of the house and you were called to respond there, right? Um, I think I was, there was a voicemail left, yes. But you were called in any event, right? Yes. And you indicated to the police that you had been there, the last one to be there, at one o'clock, right? Yes. And that, and you actually came back sometime after three o'clock, right? Um, I don't remember what time I came back. I just came back as soon as my sister checked her voicemail. And I know that, so if he said three o'clock, then you would have no quibble with it, right? Sure. No, no quibble. Right. And the you heard what items were taken, including a 25 caliber handgun. You heard that, right? Yes, I heard that. And you also indicated to the detective that the 25 caliber handgun that your grandfather had, according to him, was like a toy gun, right? Yes. And at that time, you had a purse, right? Um, yes, I did. Is that your purse? Yes, ma'am. That's a nice purse. Thank you. And in fact, this is what you carried your items in, right? Yes. And this purse, this toy gun purse, could have fit in your purse, right? Um, I don't know. I've never seen it. So, um, you, 
How about the gun that you used to kill Mr. Uh, Alexander? How big was that gun? It wasn't very big. Looked like a toy gun, right? Um, it looked like a real gun to me. Well, and it could fit in your purse, couldn't it? Um, if I removed some other items, it would fit. So the answer is yes, it could fit in your purse, right? Yes. So. There's just a mounting series of coincidences here, isn't there, that she just cannot keep denying. <laughs> it's rather pathetic, isn't it? Absolute bleeding look where I don't know what planet she's on at the moment. No, me neither. Uh, but I do know that this is yet another one of those coincidences. You know, put two and two together usually makes four, doesn't it? Absolutely. She knew exactly what she was doing. Yeah, it's just getting harder and harder for her to keep dismissing these coincidences as sheer coincidences, isn't it? Yeah, it's be the beam bro broken down one by one. Yeah. This occurred on May 28th of 2008, shortly before you left on your trip, right? Um, the burglary, yes. And this is during the time, 10 days after you've had this telephone conversation with Mr. Alexander, right? 10 days after what conversation? The sex conversation that you had on the telephone, which was on the... It would have been 18, 18 days. 18 days, I'm sorry. Yes. So it's 18 days later, right? Yes. And so you are still having conversations with Mr. Alexander, correct? Yes. And it, and you indicate that, well, I really wasn't going to go visit him, right? Um, that was not the plan when I hit the road. Right. That's what you said. That was not the plan to go down there. Yet, when you get to Southern California, you're now at the Starbucks, right? Yes. And you're at the Starbucks, and you are sitting around drinking your strawberry frappuccino, right? Um, no, I just went in and then came out. Okay. And in the time that it took for you to go in and come out, something happened to your car, according to you, right? Yes. There was another series of coincidences here, Well, right? I think it was that time that that happened. Well, no, that's what you sort of indicated on direct examination, that that's when you think it happened, right? Yes. How long were you inside of Starbucks? Um, I'd say five to ten minutes. I used the restroom, there was a long line, and then after I got my drink, I waited for it to be made, and then I went back out to my car right. to get on the road. And according to you, then you came out to your car, right? Yes. And when you came out to your car, you indicated that there were some skaters there, right? Uh, yes. And about what time of the day was that? Um, it was at night. So what time at night? I don't know. It was... was I don't know, sometime between 9 and 10? I don't know. It wasn't too late, but it was at night. And while you're there, when you come out, you see that there are these skaters laughing near your car, correct? Not like laughing loud, just kind of snickering. So they were snickering near your car, right? Um, as they were skating away from my car. Right. And there were other cars in the parking lot, right? Yes. And it was a pavement kind of parking lot, right? Yes. It wasn't dirt or anything like that. And one of the things that you notice when you get into your car is that you see something in front of you, right? Yes. And you decide to investigate, right? Yes. And were you pulled in, ma'am? Um, yes, I was pulled in forward. You were pulled in forward and there was a sidewalk in front of you? Um, the sidewalk wasn't directly in front of me, but there was a curb. So there was a curb and your bumper's right next or in front of that, right? That's right. And you're coming out from the Starbucks, which is presumably on the sidewalk, which is what you're calling the curb, right? No, but the Starbucks would have been behind and to the right of the vehicle. Okay. So there was this curb there, and you see these individuals. How many were they? I think there were three. And you then, is it well lit, this area? Is it well lit? Um, there are lights in the parking lot. And you go and you get in your car and you turn the car on and you're getting ready to leave, right? That's right. And as you get ready to leave, you turn your lights on, right? Yes. And as you turn your lights on, something catches your eye, right? Not till I began to back out. Okay, so you begin to back out and something catches your eye, right? Yes. Why do you care that something's out in front of you if you don't know anything about your license plate? This is one of the more ridiculous aspects of this story, isn't it? Oh yeah, just another coincidence. Yeah, these phantom skaters that just happened to target her car. 
Yeah, when they could have tackled anyone's. Let's presume that these skaters were all guys, right? And she is this hot body that she thinks she is. I think rather than, you know, play a prank on her and unscrew, you know, her number plate, I think they'd be ogling her more, wouldn't they? Yeah, and taking photos. Maybe taking photos, yeah, on the camera phones they were around at the time. Yeah. Um, I certainly don't think that they would, you know, these skaters, unless they, you know, wanted to play a joke on her, but I just don't think this is a very plausible explanation as to why her number plate ended up upside down. It's not. I think she did it. Of course she did it. Of course she did it. She she did it to avoid the cameras, to avoid the traffic cameras. Yeah, but didn't she think that that would arouse suspicions with police? Well, she was pulled over and I think that's where, you know, this story came from, direct from the Marshmallow Garden. Why would you even care? Because it was a reflector. It was reflective and I just kind of put the two together like, mm, maybe I should check what that is real quick before I hit the road. And when you're saying it's a reflector, are you talking about the uh, registration tags that they put on the back of, or on the, uh, on the um, license plates? No. What kind of reflector are you talking about? Then? It was kind of like it just lit up more, like it reflected a lot more than anything else around it. The pavement was dull, it was lit, but like by my headlights, but not like this thing that was bright. And it was flat though, right? Um, it was just a flash, so... No, no. The object was flat, correct? I didn't see until I got out that it was a flat license plate. So, when you're in a car, you don't even know it's a license plate, right? Um, no, not till I get out to investigate. So that means that as you're backing up, you see this something that catches your eye, right? Yes. And it's about 9 or 10 o'clock at night, right? Yes. And you decide to go look at it, right? Yes. And so you look at it and you decide it's a license plate, right? Yes. Well, ma'am, why take it? Um, because I looked right at it. Well, I pulled back in, turned my car off, and then I looked at my license plate, had bugs all over the front minus where the license plate was, and I had just driven some five, six hundred miles from Wairika, or right. Redding, and then the license plate that I was holding had a right. ton of bugs of the same kind of, like, sure. amount. So right. I just kind of threw it in my car and left. Right. But you never thought to compare it to the one in the back, did you? No. Okay. In, or, in other words, you're taking a license plate that you have no idea whether or not it belongs to you, right? No, I have an idea. Well, wait a minute. You, you didn't check it with the one in the back? No. And license plates have numbers and letters on them, right? Yes. This one had numbers and letters on it, right? Yes. It could be that it belonged to somebody else, right? Um, that's possible. Sure it was, because you didn't take the time, according to you, to go to the back to see whether or not it matched, right? No. And so what you do is, Potentially, without knowing what it's about, you grab it, right? Um, I had an idea of what it's about, so I can't say that I didn't know. Well, you grab it, right? Yes. You take it without checking. Yes. And then you put it in the car, right? Yes. You put it in the back seat of the car, right? Um, no, I think it was in the front floorboard. So you put it in the front seat of the car, right? The floorboard. The floorboard. Yes. This dirty license plate that has all these bugs on it, right? Yes. You decide to go ahead and take it anyway, right? Yes. Speaking of bugs, as two people who's suffered with them, we hope that Jodie's bed is crawling with bed bugs every single night. You got any leeches for this? Ah! And did it ever occur to you to investigate the license plate in the back to see whether or not it matched? Um. Not right then. I was more concerned about getting in my car and locking the doors. Pardon? I was more concerned about getting in my car and locking the doors. Because you were concerned for your safety, right? Somewhat, yes. Well, if you're concerned for your safety, why are you getting out to go check on something that is just shining there? Good question. Well, because I didn't know, I wasn't concerned until I realized that that had happened, so. Well, no, but, but if you're concerned for your safety, why are you getting out and exposing yourself? I didn't get out after the concern arose. That is a really brilliant question, isn't it? Yeah, another contradiction. Yeah, I mean, if you're in a car and, you know, if you're rushing to your car to go to safety, you won't get out again. 
to go and get a number plate, you'll think, well, bollocks to that. I'm go- I'm, I'm off. I'm going to drink my strawberry frappuccino while I'm driving. Yeah. Doesn't make sense, does it? Doesn't make one ounce of sense. But then again, nothing she's said so far does. No, nothing. This castle of lies is slowly crumbling, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Overruled. Objection. Stop speaking into the courtroom. Okay. <clears throat> you may continue. I didn't if get out are, until the consent. Let me let me ask it again. If you are afraid for, you told us that you were afraid. She answer the question before he interjects. Restate your question. You indicated that you were afraid for your safety. That's why you didn't check the front license plate, the license plate that you found with the one in the back, right? No, I indicated that getting in the car and locking the doors was what was on my mind. Con- checking it with the back didn't occur to me. And then, but I asked you about it, and just now you said, well, I got in the car, I locked the doors, and I was sort of in a, in a hurry to do that because you were worried about your safety. You said that, right? It was a concern. It wasn't, I wasn't right. like scared or anything, but it was a concern. Right, so the picture quality is going to go a bit poo for the next 45 minutes or so. Um, Eon Blue 3's footage that we've been using for this is missing about 45 minutes. We've managed to find that on the David Lower video, haven't we? Yeah, we have. So sorry about that, guys. Yeah, please bear with us. Um, but yeah, we'll try and make the video as, you know, as clear as we can, but it's pretty bad quality. So we're sorry. Right. It, it was such a concern that you did it quickly, right? Um, I locked the doors quickly, yes. Yeah. And you turned the car on quickly. That's what you just told us, right? Yes. But you were not so concerned about your safety that when you saw something that you didn't even know what it was, you got out to investigate, right? Not initially, that's correct. Well, you didn't know what it was initially, right? Um, I didn't know it was a license plate, so no. Right. You just said that it, you thought it was something shiny, right? Yeah, reflective. You see something shiny, you're concerned for your safety, and you're backing out, and you're in a place of safety already, aren't you? Um, you said I'm concerned for my safety, but as I was doing that, I wasn't concerned for my safety. Oh, man. When you're in the car and you're backing out and you see this reflective thing or thing that's reflecting, you are in a place of safety at that point, aren't you? Um, parking lot at night, public place, it's pretty safe, I guess. No, I'm talking inside of the car with the doors locked. You're in a place of safety then, right? Yes. So that if anybody's coming at you, if you're concerned, you could just gun it and, and drive away, right? I'd have to keep backing out, but yes, I could drive away. Sure, you, you, you're in a position of, if you will, a power at that point because you can back up, right? Yes. And you can move forward, correct? No, I couldn't move forward, but after, oh, after backing up. Yes. Yeah, sure. And you could leave if you wanted to, right? Uh, yes. But instead of doing that, even though you're concerned for your safety, you see something that you can't identify, right? I was not concerned for my safety at that point. That's the distinction. Well, you still see something that's really just something that reflects, correct? That's correct. And you said that it was flat, right? Um, I'm trying to, I just saw a bright flash when my headlights hit it. Gone over this three or four times. Sustained. How can you tell us that you saw anything reflective, ma'am, if the reflective materials on the license plate are on the top of it and you said it was flat? How could you have seen it? Because it was angled on the curb. It's still flat, but it's still reflected on the Did, lights. Didn't you tell us when we started this talk that it was flat? Didn't you just tell us that a little bit earlier? Yes. It's and flat. so if it's flat, the reflective material on the license plate, would you agree, is on the top? I'm Only. Ask me an argumentative. All world. Okay, apologies for this. This is a bit of delayed reaction. Okay, let's just reconstruct this. So she is at Starbucks. She's in this whatever strip mall. Yeah? Yeah. She is parked in a parking space front way. So in other words, she's got a curb facing her. Um, the car's back end, as I recall her saying, was facing um, Starbucks. Starbucks was to the back and left of the car's rear end. Would that be right? Either the back of the left or back of the, of the right, whatever, right? She then said that she noticed bugs and um, screw holes or something on the front of her car. Why would she go 
to the front of her car and look if she's coming back from Starbucks towards her door, which is nearer to Starbucks than the front of her car. I don't get that. Well, the, she is a strange one, and that is a strange thing to do. But there is no reason for her to go to the front of her car. And she said when she started reversing, she saw this thing. So th this doesn't make sense to me. Don't add up. No. Sorry about this. This is just kind of delayed reaction. We, it, instead of going back and finding the bit where she said this, please forgive us for jumping in here, but... I just don't get how that is possible. If I've misheard some of the testimony wrong or we've misheard it wrong, please tell us in the comments. But would you ordinarily, if you're coming out of a petrol station or, or a, a, a Starbucks and you walk into your car and it's facing away from the Starbucks, would you go to the front of your car to look before getting in? Chances are you wouldn't. You'd just get in your car. Yeah. That would be your main concern. Yeah. So... Please forgive me if this, you know, doesn't make sense to you, me, but it makes sense to you guys because I just can't get my head wrapped around this, can you? No, strange. Yeah, very strange. Only if it would have been laying flat, but that wasn't the case. But isn't that how, what you told us to start with? No. You told us something, you, according to you, you told us something else. I didn't tell you that. Well... Let me do this. The front of the car where you looked to see where your license plate was? Yes. You saw that, right? Yes. It was flat, wasn't it? On the front of my car? Yes. Yes. It was. Where it would go. So that if there was a license plate that was there, it would also be flat, correct? Yes, the license plate was flat. Right. And if a license plate is taken off and thrown or done something to, if that license plate is put on the ground, it would either, if it's flat, would either lay face down, flat, or face up, flat, correct? If it was in that position, that is correct. You're saying that, you told me previously that you saw it laying down on the sidewalk. Do you remember that? No, I remember saying there was no sidewalk there, just a curb. Okay, that it was laying on the curb, right? It was leaning on the curb. So, not, so it was leaning on the curb. Was it, you're saying now that the reflective part was leaning on the curb? Yes. Well, there's a curb, but there's a little bumper, so your car doesn't drive forward. It was on that, against that bumper thing. So, you, so it's like a cinder block, is that what yeah, you're saying? Yeah, I think that's what it would be called. And, and this is the cinder block that you told us that you parked the wheels of your car up against, right? Um, I don't know that I touched the cinder block with the wheels, but I pulled into that space. Well, yeah, you told us that the front of the car came up to the sidewalk area. Do you remember just telling us that? There is no sidewalk there. Or it came up to the area where the cinder block was. Do you remember telling us that? Yes. So if you came up to the cinder block with the front of your car, which is what you told us, right? Yes. And this is the cinder block right here, and this is your car. What you are now telling us is that that license plate, as you backed up, is now leaning, standing up on the inside portion of the cinder block so that when you back away, you it flashes, right? That's where it was. So what you're telling us is that whoever did this took the time to not only take the license plate off, but also took the time to crawl underneath the car, because you now have the bumper there, and put it down inside the cinder block. Objection calls for speculation as to what somebody did when they removed her license plate. Okay, stand. The car you told us was pulled up against the cinder block. Do you remember when we talked, when we started this, that's what you told me? I said it was pulled into that space. No, you told us that it was up against the cinder block. Do you remember telling us that? I remember. Yes, testimony, Your Honor. Sustained. Rephrase. And when you, you were pulled in, right? Yes. I know it would be highly unethical and it would have got him disbarred, but do you know something? I wouldn't have blamed Juan here for having a, you know, little jot of rum or in a nip of gin in that water to, to cope with questioning this monster you know what i mean
Yeah, or maybe even a drop of vodka, but then again, I really don't think the courts would allow it. <laughs> well, obviously not, but can you imagine him uh, coming up to Miss Harris and going, uh, ma'am, hi, sweetie, <laughs> pisses than you. You know, that'd be really funny, wouldn't it? It would, actually. And then you said that you went into this Starbucks, right? Yes. And the car, as we're talking about it, there were some people around it when you came out, right? When I came out, there were some kids, yes. They were not near the front of your car, right? Um, I don't know. I didn't see them like in the front crouched down or anything right. like that. You said they were already kind of gone, right? They were snickering and starting to skate away from my car. And you didn't think anything of it, right? Um, I didn't give it any deep thought. And the front of the car was next to the cinder block, right? Um, well, yeah, next to would be accurate. Right. And the license plate, as you describe it, was standing towards the driver of the cinder block, right? Um, it was leaning, so yes. That right. was so it was right. leaning, right? On the, yeah, on my side. And so as you're backing up, right? Yes. It flashes, right? That's correct. And you said, oh, you just told us. I didn't know what it was. You remember telling us that? Yes. How can you tell us that you didn't know what it was if it's standing up leaning and it's got numbers and it's reflective? How can you tell us you don't know what it is? I'm nearsighted and I didn't get glasses until 2010. What? What bloody business has she got going behind the wheel of a bleeding car without glasses if she is nearsighted? Is there any crap excuse that this woman will not dig up from this rancid marshmallow garden of hers of course not she, she makes everything up as she goes along hoping people will buy it do you know something this isn't just bollocks it's sweaty smelly bollocks isn't it it's crap that goes down the bog so now you're saying that you're driving and your perception is so bad that you can't see that it's a it's a it's a uh, it's a license plate. I didn't really see what it was. That's why I got out to investigate. It was square. Couldn't you see that? It was rectangular. Okay, it was rectangular, and it was flashing. Couldn't you see that? Uh, it, yeah, it made a reflection. So that's how you know that it was that that's what caught your attention, right? The bright flash caught me. Right. And so as you're backing out, we know, or you've, you've driven in California before, right? Yes. Probably. You know that license plates are reflective, right? Uh, yes, I do. And in fact, on one side, they have numbers and letters, right? Uh, yes. And the numbers are different colors than the background, right? Or the numbers and letters are different colors than the background, right? Yes, the back is technically white. Usually. Right, exactly. And so you're familiar with that, and you're saying that as you're backing up, the lights are on this rectangular object that's got numbers it's, or letters, whatever they are, and it's got bugs on it, and you're backing up, and your headlights are on it, and you say you don't know what it is? This day, we are going to take the afternoon recess, ladies and gentlemen. Please be back in the jury room at 325, and we will start promptly at that time. Please remember the admonition. You are excused. Ms. Arias, you may step down. We are at recess. As time goes on in this, her testimony is becoming more and more unbelievable fantastic and i don't mean fantastic in the positive sense i mean you know very hard to believe it's that you know you could drive whole trains through some of the plot holes she's you know managed to manufacture in a story um <laughs> this is fascinating isn't it from from kind of two people who have never properly watched a trial all the way through it's fascinating in terms of learning but it's fascinating to see like you know this monster being broken down slowly and being forced to go to a marshmallow garden for you know completely preposterous explanations 
all of her explanations are just no good because every explanation she comes up with, Martinez just breaks it down again. Yeah, blows it out of the water, doesn't he? He does, yeah, yeah. and I, it's really fascinating to watch him work. But she, like I said before, she's doing it to herself as well. She's, you know, changing her testimony on the stand and Nermi's doing his job saying it's being mischaracterised, but we all know it isn't. Yeah, Ma but Martinez is repeating accurate testimony that she has made. Yeah, and now she's trying to backpedal and say she didn't say this. Yeah, and of course Nermi's got her back, but he's you know he's paid to have her back. He doesn't want to have her back. But yeah, this is just this is getting more and more intriguing. Um, I mean, when she opts off the stand, when the, the Jodie Arias show stops and the Ali, uh, Alice Lavoilette show starts. You know, I'm quite looking forward to that one as well. I am looking forward to that one. Right, let's get the rest of this in the bag, shall we? Yeah. When you were at this uh, Starbucks, did you, had you already called Mr. Alexander or not? I don't think so. So you called him after the Starbucks and that's when you gave him the news that you were going to come out to Mesa, correct? Um, I called him twice, I think. I can't remember because I called him and I texted him. So it was around that time. But it was after I began, after I left Starbucks and the gas station, I believe. And so it was after that that you then tell him the news that you are going to go, right? Come to Mesa, right? Yes. And one of the things that you told us that the reason that you came out here was that um, he had uh, an ability to, according to you, to just basically um, guilt you into doing things, right? Um. Yeah, but in a sweet way. If someone is guilt tripping you into doing something you do not want to do, that is not going to be sweet. It, I can't even, you know, envisage a, a scenario where that would be considered endearing at all. But I think it was completely the opposite way around. It wasn't him guilting her. It was him. It was her nagging him and mithering him until he gave in and thought, oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah, I think so. I think that was more the case. So this is just rubbish. Well, guilt is guilt, whether it's sweet or bittersweet. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. And so it's not a very positive thing to be guilted into something, right? Um, I don't know. Pardon? Um, I kind of felt good when he was doing it. So, was it something that your voluntary will was overcome by just him asking? Uh, no, it was my voluntary will was not overcome. And, in fact, he was uh, sweet about it, right? Yes. It wasn't like he was mean about it, right? No. And you called him. Why call him after you already gassed up and everything and you're on your way to Utah? Why call him if you've already made the decision to go to Utah? Why, why give him a call? What? Why? Um, because as I was calling him prior to the trip, he kept like, guilting me would be the term. And to be honest, it was flattering and I enjoyed hearing it. So prior to you ever initiating the trip, you and he talk about this trip, right? Prior to initiating the whole road trip or just right. part to Prior Arizona? to initiating the trip, you told us that he called you and you told him mm -hmm. about it. Yes. And you indicated that he was guilty and you went to coming to Mesa, right? Yes. And you also indicated that, well, because of that, that's the reason why you changed your mind, right? Yes. So it took approximately two days for you to change your mind after he talked to you, right? Um, no, we, he found out about a week before. So in other words, it was a week before that he laid the guilt trip on you? The first time, yes. So he laid the guilt trip on you more than once? Yes. And the last time was before you left on the trip, right? Um, yes. And so it isn't like while you were on the trip that he's calling you and saying, come out to Mesa, right? He's not doing that according to your testimony. Um, we talked, but he wasn't calling me. Right. But you talk, but it's not like he's telling you when you talk, hey, come see me, is he? When I'm on the road? Right. Yes, absolutely he is. Oh, so he's also guilting you then, right? Yes. 
And it's something that you keep saying that he keeps guilting you. That, that's, that's the phrase that you're using, right? Uh, yes. And, it, you know, you smiled there like it was something pleasant. Yeah, he was very sweet about it. Right. And so, uh, did he guilt you before getting to Pasadena? Um, every time we talked, he did. I don't remember all the times. I was bored on the road and I called a lot of people. Right. And so, the last time that you talked to him before the Starbucks was when? Um, sometime on the road, I don't remember. And would it be between Salinas and Pasadena? I think so. And during that time, he guilted you, right? Yes. If he keeps guilting you from the beginning, well, and you're going on this trip to see an individual by the name of Ryan Burns, right? Yes. You have a romantic interest in Mr. Burns, right? Uh, potential romantic interest. All right, potential romantic interest in Mr. Burns, right? Yes. And so you're on this trip to do the, the PPL thing, right? Yes. And you're doing the Ryan Burns thing, right? Yes. And you have Mr. Alexander guilting you, right? Yes. If he's guilting you, and you already have another bow or another person out there, why do you keep exposing yourself to it? Well, Travis had that effect on me, I guess well, you could say. It was because you liked it, isn't it? I did like it. And it, because you liked it, then it wasn't guilting you, if you liked it. Well, it's the way he couched the terms, that's why I say guilt. Well, guilt implies that it's something unpleasant, right? That's not yes, what I meant to way. imply. But. Oh, Our FTR sure. is down again. We have technical difficulties that will take about three minutes. We may have made this point before, if we have apologies, but... There is no logic to what she is trying to say, and let's unpack it, shall we? So, she is saying that um, she called Travis, and Travis guilted her to go to Mesa and see him, right? She had a clear choice, didn't she? She did. Whether to go and see Travis, or whether to go and see Ryan. She had been involved with Travis for, what, over two years? Uh th think that's right right and according to her he was abusive he was nasty he had an unhealthy sexual interest in children yeah um he wasn't a nice guy basically according to her whereas ryan burns she didn't know very well but seemed like a nice guy seemed like a decent guy and from what we saw on the stand we can't disagree with that can we no we, he, he he seems like a real nice guy yeah right so what I don't get is why she would choose to go with Travis, why she would choose to go to Travis in this scenario of hers, who has been nothing but awful to her. Well, not nothing but awful to her, but has been awful to her. Versus going to see Ryan, who is a perhaps, you know, potential husband. Why would she make that decision? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And she made that decision because all that stuff that she would said about him isn't true yeah exactly so this is so transparent i think even the jury is weighing this up and thinking yeah nah we don't believe this yeah something doesn't add up yeah exactly let me continue we were talking about your indication that uh mr alexander guilted you into coming to mesa arizona back on june 3rd or june 4th of 2008 mm -hmm. that's what we were talking about correct yes now, the way you describe it, though, you're using the word guilt, but what you're actually telling us is that you were flattered that he wanted to see you. That's true. And if he's flattered that he wants to see you, then it really isn't a guilt thing, is it? Um, it kind of was a thing in our relationship, so I would still call it guilt. You called it guilt, but actually it was, you were flattered by it, right? Yes. And so you decided that instead of going to see Mr. Burns, you were going to instead come to see Mr. Alexander, correct? Yes. And it was your decision solely, right? Yes. And uh, one of the things that we know is that now in your car you have at least 12 extra gallons worth of gas, right? Um, well, I have... The two fives. And well, let's do this. You have a car full of, of gas, correct? A tank full of gas. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. You have two 
five gallon tanks, two five gallon cans full of gas, correct? That's correct. And then you have an extra two gallons, right? Um, yes, somewhere. And these cans are in the trunk of the car, correct? Yes. And you're driving along, and even though you have this gas in the back of your car, you decide that you're going to stop at Desert Center and, and put gas in the car, right? That's right. Um, and again, the purpose of you, you bringing the gas cans is financial, isn't it? Um, initially, that was the purpose. And so gas is supposedly cheaper here in Arizona than it is in California, right? That's been my experience. So you could have used these, the gas in the cans, but you decided not to, right? Yes. Uh, you also indicated when you started at Des when you stopped at Desert Center. Well, is there a receipt for that, or did you pay cash for that? I paid cash, and I believe there was a receipt. So uh, the receipt you just didn't keep, right? Um, I can't say I didn't keep it. Add that one to the list of convenient conveniences. But well, if you were going to deduct it as a business expense, you would have you by necessity need to have it, right? Yes, but trip to Travis's was not a business expense. Well, he also was with PPL, right? Yes. He also conducted trainings, right? Uh, yes. And it could have been if you went to dinner or something, and you, you, the two of you talked about PPL, it could be considered a business expense. Could it? Regulation as to business deductions. Overall. Um, if I wanted to cheat on my taxes, I could have used it as a business expense. So you're saying it's okay to lie to police, but not okay to cheat on your taxes, right? Here's an argument. <laughs> so did you say you didn't want to cheat on your taxes, right? When was I didn't say that. When was the last time that you filed your taxes? Uh, before 2008. Objection as to relevance. Have you taken tax deductions prior to 2008 uh, on your income taxes? Yes. And so, it, but there's no receipt that you know of right now uh, of your stop in Desert Center, correct? Um, well, there was a receipt. I don't know where it is, if it still exists. All right. And then you, but do you know whether or not you paid with cash or a MasterCard? I'm pretty sure that I paid cash, but I don't remember. All right. So you paid cash there. And then you came to California. And, and if we're talking about the amount of money that it takes to fill up a car, um, if we go with Winnemucca indication, that was approximately $40, wasn't it? Um, I believe it was. I don't remember. It was somewhere in that range. It was 12 gallons, though, wasn't it? Yes. You then came to Arizona and you stopped in Buckeye, right? Uh, yes. And you filled up again, right? Uh, yes, I think I feel that. And again, it would be approximately or over 12 gallons, correct? Objection foundation. There's no evidence to that effect. Oh, well, you, you may answer. Um, I think. And uh, given the prices that we've been seeing here, for example, in exhibit number 237, it's uh, bad exposure, so. You see the price of gas there is four dollars and uh, four point one six nine per gallon, right? Yes. If we round that down, what we're talking about, for example, at Desert Center, if if you're putting in twelve, well, here in Buckeye, did you use uh, your Mastercard or did, or your debit card or did you use um, cash? Um, I'm pretty sure that I used cash, but I'm not positive. All right, let's say that you used cash. If we're then talking about 12 gallons at Desert Center at $4, that's approximately... Objection, Your Honor. Foundation, there's no evidence of how much the gas costs in Buckeye or Desert Center. He's using Pasadena numbers. Is this a hypothetical? Pardon? Is this a hypothetical or you... It is a hypothetical. All right, overall. Hypothetically speaking, man, if the ga gallon of gas is four dollars at Desert Center and you put twelve gallons of gas in it, that's forty-eight dollars, correct? Four dollars and how many gallons? Twelve. Yes. And if you do the same thing in Buckeye, that's another forty-eight dollars, right? Um. Yes. 
And if we're doing the math, that's $96 total, right? Yes. If we add the $96 to the $85 that you've already put in California, that's approximately $181, right? Um, 96 plus how much? 85. Um, how much did you say with the total? 181. Um, yeah, I guess. Assuming the math is correct, it's $181, right? Yes. You told us when you left on this trip that the most you had was $200, right? Um, I wasn't sure, but I was guessing that was probably it. Right. So now you were out of money, right? Not necessarily. Well, if you took $200 and you spent $185, you're now out of money, right? Um, under this hypothesis, yes. Okay. And you're in Arizona. Uh, you haven't even arrived at Mr. Alexander's yet, correct? Mm, not yet. I'm in Buckeye, I think is where we left off. And so then you get to Mr. Alexander's house and uh, you indicate to us that uh, he is there and you see him, you want some videos, right? Yes. Uh, this issue of him guilting you, um, you were free to say no, correct? Yes. And you were free to walk away from him and his request at any time, right? At that point in time, yes. This was a choice that you made to go over, correct? Yes. And it was a choice because, what, you loved him? I still loved him, yes. But that's not why she went. No, the real reason we all know. Yep, to kill Mimi Hall, and if she wasn't there, kill Travis. Exactly. Because if Jody couldn't have Travis, then neither could Mimi. And Travis couldn't have Mimi either. Were you in love with him? I think you make that distinction sometimes. Um, it wasn't the same kind. I don't really know. I wouldn't say in love in the sense that um, I've been in love in the past where I want to be with him forever or, you know, have a life with him. But I still had strong feelings for him. And so from what I hear you saying, the purpose of you going there was sex then? Um, she's talking about love and not sex. Rephrase. Sustained. Well, you said that you weren't in love with him anymore. You just told us that, right? Not in the same way. Right, exactly. Uh, you did love him, right? Yes. And uh, we heard on a May 10th, 2008, conversation between the two of you, right? Um, May 10th, yes. That's and right. in which you and he talked heatedly about sex, right? Yes. And so it appears that if you weren't in love with him and you just loved him, and you were going there, and based on that conversation, was one of the purposes for going there, on your part, was to have sex with him. That was one of the purposes. So it wasn't like he foisted it. In other words, he forced you into anything, right? No, nothing was forced. And so you get there and you go to sleep, right? Um, not immediately, but yes. Shortly thereafter, correct? Yes. He doesn't force himself upon you, does he? No. In fact, what ends up happening is that you guys sleep... The, the most of the next day away, correct? Yes. Happy and you get up around sometime around one o'clock in the afternoon, right? Um, that's when we were both awake, yes. And presumably you eat breakfast, is that correct or not? Um, I don't remember eating. As I recall, didn't they eat each other for breakfast? Yeah, and had second helpings as well, and probably thirds. Yet. Do you eat it when you get up at all? Um, after the sex, I think I had a banana and, <laughs> <laughs> and he had oatmeal or something. So you had sex before having breakfast, correct? Yes. And during this time is when you indicate that the rope is used, right? Yes. And the length of the rope that we're talking about is approximately 20 feet, right? Um, a world. I would say it was from me to maybe Flores, maybe slightly shorter or slightly longer. Do you remember speaking with uh, Mr. Samuels, Dr. Samuels, Richard Samuels? Yes. And in fact, you talked to him about this particular rope, right? Yes. You told him it was 20 feet, right? It was a guess. I don't know how long 20 feet is. Ma'am, you did tell him it was 20 feet, right? I think I approximated it, but I didn't say it was exactly 20 feet. So if he has 20 feet written down, that's not what you said. Objection argument. Oh, um, I may have said 20 feet, but I was still guessing. All right. So you did you indicate to Richard Samuels that you were guessing when you said 20 feet? I might have. 
We didn't measure the rope. Pardon? We didn't measure the rope. Okay. All right, but it was a very long rope then, right? Yes. Did you also tell Richard Samuels that you and Mr. Alexander took photographs of each other? Yes. And did you tell him that the photographs that Mr. Alexander took of you while, were while he was penetrating you and you were on top of him? Did you tell him that? Uh, no. So if that's his understanding, that's incorrect. No, that was the video. No, I'm asking you about whether or not you told him that. I told him that, but not photographs, just the video. So if he says the photographs show that, he is incorrect. Um, I would believe so, because I don't think we took any photos in that manner. I couldn't figure out the timer. So my question to you is, did you ever tell him that the photographs were taken while you were on top of him? In that fashion, as I previously described. Um, did you tell him that, yes or no? That's all I need. I think I said video, so probably not photos. So the, is the answer no? The answer is... As a mark of respect, we thought on Sunday at 12 o'clock we could have a minute's flatulence. Photos? No. The no. answer's no. No. All right. And so, you said that you engaged in whatever activity you were engaging in, and at some point, um, you are tied up, right? Yes. And when you're tied up, it's loose enough so that you can get out at any time, correct? Yes. And you say that um, at some point it's not going well or it's not as pleasant as thought and the ropes are cut, right? For the knife. Um, no, the ropes were cut prior to being tied up so that we could measure out for the nooses. So, so, and I think this is the same rope that they're talking about that was... I think it was on the stairs. Do you remember that photo? Yeah, I think I remember that. And I wouldn't call that rope. I'd call it thread. I don't think it's strong enough to even even bound a mouse's paws, is it? <laughs> Not from what we saw. So in terms of when you're done using the ropes, didn't you indicate previously that, that uh, they were cut off of you? No, I could slip my wrists in and out. So you slipped your wrists out? Yes. And so in other words, the rope is there, you guys are using it. Where the piece that you didn't use, where did it go? Um, it was there at the time. I know it was there at the time. Where there? In either in the bedroom or bathroom. I can't remember. Pardon? Either in the bedroom or bathroom. So you don't know where it was, is what you're telling me, right? Are you talking about the portion we did not use? That's the portion that I'm talking about. It was thrown aside somewhere, I don't know. So when you said bathroom, why were you saying bathroom? Because that's, he went all the way to the bathroom and I was all the way near the bed. We were just seeing how long it was. So he was, did he go down the hallway or did he go through the closet? Down the hallway. And he made it all the way back to the bed with it, right? Um, wouldn't he, what do you mean? Well, with the rope in his hand, when you guys were measuring, it appears that one of you held one end and he held the other, right? Yes, first he cut it and then he came back to the bed. Was there any holding of it? such that you were able to see the length of the rope. That's what it appears yes. that you told us. Yes. Okay, which end did you hold? The end in the bedroom or the end in the bathroom? The end in the bedroom. And he was in the bathroom, right? Yes. And so you're saying that even though he's in the bathroom when you guys are checking to see the length of this particular rope, that he cuts it in the bathroom, right? Yes, he did. What's the purpose, what is the necessity of cutting it in the bathroom? Why would you even need to cut this rope? Because it was too long to make nooses on the ends. What an absolute load of cods, Wallop. There's no such thing as a rope being too long to make a knot in it. No, because you could tie a knot at the end. Yeah, and you could easily make a slip, slip knot kind of noose at the end. If you give yourself enough rope from the end, you could do it. So there's no such thing as a rope being too long. She's talking us a crap there as usual. So you're saying that the only way to make a noose at the end of this rope is if you get it the exact size of the bed, if you will, all the way around so that it comes to whatever part of your anatomy is going to be tied up so that the ends meet exactly there. That's the only way that this is going to work. And that's why you guys needed to cut it, right? That's not what I'm saying. Mr. Alexander's plan. Sustained. You were there, right? Yes. And you were part of this plan, right? Yes. You were helping, right? Yes. So you knew what was going on, right? Um, I knew I was going to be tied up. 
Pardon? I knew I was going to be Right, tired. and so you knew that's why the rope was being cut, right? Yes. According to you, right? And so the way you're describing it is that the rope had to be a certain perfect length in order for the tying up to take place. Same Mr. Alexander's plan in terms of the length. Of a rope. Um, I don't know. What was the question? I'm sorry. Mike, could you please read it back? So you're saying that the rope had to be a certain length for it to be perfectly the same length for this to take place? Um, I would, I guess it had to be a certain length, but I don't know where perfect comes in. Well, couldn't it be, ma'am, that the rope, whether it was 20, 15 feet, if it was going to be wrapped around something, you didn't have to have the ends where your hands or wrists were going to be. It could be a little longer and you could just tie it up and there would be some left over. You could do that, couldn't you? I don't know how to make nooses, so I don't know the answer to that. I'm not talking. This wasn't a case where he was going to hog tie you, right? No. This wasn't a case where he wanted you immobile, right? Um, you actually cause for speculation. I don't know what he wanted. Feigned rephrase. Well, you said that you're free to move there, right? Get your hands out, right? Yes. If I and those were the only things that were tied, right? Yes. So, the purpose of this rope is purely decorative for the fantasy of it, right? Yes. So, it's not a situation where you have to know it, it, it exact tie. In other words, you don't have to have an exact noose or to go around the wrist. You can just put it on there, right? Objection. Oh, it's for speculation. Oh, really? Um, I don't really know what kind of knot was required. I just call them nooses. You've tied shoes before, adjusted. haven't you? Yes. And you've put two ends of string together and tied them together, haven't you? Yes. And the previous time that he tied you up, it was the same sort of thing. He just tied you up, right? Um, same sort of thing as shoelaces? No. I'm not saying it was with shoelaces. I'm saying there was a knot. That's yes. all that is required, right? Yes. And so to make a knot, there is no exact ending to the rope that needs to be there. The knot can be, the rope can be whatever length you want it to be, and then you just, in this case, put your wrist through it, you tie it loose, and you don't need to be cutting it, do you? Objection. Asking. Answered and argumentative. Over it. Is she seriously trying to make us believe that she's never tied a knot in her whole life? <laughs> of course she has. This monster is absolutely astounding sometimes isn't she i mean some of the the basic things that it's second nature for us to do she has problems with you know i'm just wondering how you know she finds a way home every night i'm just wondering who instructs her to breathe it's she is by far she thinks she's calculating but if you look into her ears you will see daylight she's thick She's vile. Um, well, I didn't cut it, so I don't know. Well, you were a participant in this, and you were holding one end, right? Yes. And you were going to have your wrist tied, right? Yes. And so you, and the rope was soft, right? Yes. And so you knew that you could take the end of the rope and tie it, or you could take the middle of the rope and tie it, right? That, that was possible, right? That was possible. Sure, and that could be done, right? I guess it could be, yes. And there would be no need for a knife at that point, would there? Um, no, I guess not. And so, in this case, you have this rope. Take a look at uh, exhibit number 63. Recognize this? Yes. This is Mr. Alexander's bedroom, correct? Yes. And this is the bed that you indicated that the sexual activity took place, correct? Yes. And you're indicating that the rope, from what you testified on direct examination, went behind here, right? Yes. And then it came around. Yes. And then you were sort of spread eagle there, correct? Yes. Fish. So that your left hand would have been up here. That's correct. And your right hand would have been up here, right? Yes. And that the rope sort of went behind there, right? Yes. Was it looped once or was it looped twice? Um, do you mean around the back? Yeah. Just once. And so it wasn't attached to anything at all then, right? 
No, just my wrists. And so that it was loosely fitting, if you will, around the back here, right? Yes. And this activity did not take very long, right? Um, no, it didn't. And you then slipped out of your, the rope, right? Yes. And then you continued with the activity, right? Yes. There wasn't, at that point, both of you were interested in, in whatever the object is in sexual activity, right? Whatever it was for you, right? Yes. Both of you were interested in that at that point, right? Yes. You weren't taking the bed linens off the bed or anything like that at that point, right? No. Uh, you weren't um, doing anything other than in word, weren't doing anything other than being into each other, correct? That's correct. Lovely choice of words there, one. And so at that point, when you're doing that, the rope is still there, isn't it? Um, I don't remember if we left it there and got it afterward or if he pulled it out and threw it on the side with the rest of the rope. Well, well no, because what you said is, remember, you just told me that. What you, you did is you just pulled your hand out of the rope, right? Yes. And your hand, you told me, was right here. Well, my right hand would be there. Well, lift my leg, so is mine. Right. And then your left hand would be over here, right? Yes. And so you just pulled your hands out. Right. And then you continued with whatever activity you were involved in, right? Yes. Because previous to that, he had been engaging in an activity that was uncomfortable for you, right? Um, yes, it was a little uncomfortable. And you asked him to stop, and he did, right? Yeah. What activity did you engage in, without regaling us with the details, what did you engage in afterwards? What position did you take? Um, I think that was when the photos began. Okay, so then you started to take the photographs, right? Yes. Now take a look at exhibits numbers 166. 165 through 169. Go ahead and take a look. Those are the photographs that were taken that you just told us were taken after you slipped your hands out of the news, right? Yes, not directly, but after that. Yes. Well, you said they were, you can what you told us just now was that you slipped your hands out of the news, you continued the sexual activity, and started to take photographs. Do you remember you just told us that? Yes. You've looked at those photographs, right? Yes. There's two photographs of Mr. Alexander, and there's how many of you? Um, Four? Take a look. Just count them out. Yes, four. And there is some KY there, right? KY yeah. personal lubricant, correct? That's correct. And that's the same type of, that is what you introduced him to according to the May 10, 2008 conversation, right? Yes. And nowhere there do you see any rope, do you? No. So there, even though you just told us that you continued with the sexual activity immediately after you took your hands out of the rope, the rope is nowhere to be pictured, is it? Objection, Ms. Caragrosa's in testimony. She did not say immediately. Restate your question. Ma'am, you told us that you pulled your hands out of the rope, right? Yes. And you told us that it was long enough to go all the way around the back here, right? Yes. Presumably, there's nothing in the back to hold it up, right? No, nothing. It went straight all the way to the, the ground because of gravity, right? When I slipped my wrist out, yes. The rope that was back there, it went all the way down to the ground because of gravity, because there's nothing holding it up, right? Yeah, after I took my wrist out. Not after. Before. No, it wasn't that long, I don't think. Well, let me just ask the questions, please, all right? Still very arrogant, isn't she? She'll always be arrogant, that bitch. Yeah, I think the points she embellishes and the points that she is insistent on adding to are the ones she's lying about. Yeah, I think she's trying to play one, if you ask me. Yeah, yeah, he's trying. She's, she thinks she's in control once again. She ain't. The rope is looped behind here, behind the headboard, correct? That's correct. There's nothing holding it up back there, correct? Back there, no. No, it's not the ideal headboard for tying people up, right? It's not. It's just standing there, right? What, the headboard? Yes. Yes. 
Uh, and then you said that it came around this way like this. Yes. To, to your right hand, correct? Yes. And it came around here like this to your right hand, correct? Yes. And then you said that your legs were in this portion of the bed, correct? Right. If we want, we can take a look at another photograph. Of that area. Exhibit number 64. Recognize that? Yes. This is the arm wall that you told us that you were leaning up against when the men and the women came, the man and the woman came in, right? Yes. But if you could take a look at it, this is the back of it right here, correct? The back of what? The bed? Well, what do you think I'm pointing at, man? We were just talking about the arm wall. So. Okay, but what am I pointing at right now? The bed. And your left arm would have been right here, correct? Yes. In this area. Your feet would have been down here, correct? Yes. And there was a sheet or something on top of it, right? The blankets and sheets. The blanket there. and sheets, right. And you said that, well, I slipped my hands or my wrists out of the rope, right? That's correct. If gravity has already, has the rope already down here on the ground, you agree that gra it's already down on the ground, the rope, right? I don't think so. I think it was too oh, short. Pardon? It was too short to hit the ground. It was more like, I mean, it was kind of pulled taut. So what you're saying now is that um, when you told me before that the rope was back here, now you're saying that that's not true. It's still back there, but I don't know what you're, I don't, I, can, I don't think I can visualize what you're talking about. I'm Maybe asking, talking about different things. I'm asking about this rope that you claim was used to tie you up. Do you remember that? Yes. All right. There is nothing behind this headboard. Exhibit number 66. It's not mission style furniture, is it? Um, I don't know what mission style furniture is. Slats, it doesn't have any slats. Uh, no, it doesn't. It's more like a sleigh, correct? Yes, it's a sleigh bed. And as a sleigh bed, it doesn't have anything in the back that would hold a rope if it was draped around it. Okay, sweetheart, if we were of a mind to tie each other up, and I'm not saying that we are not, and I'm not saying that we are, <laughs> but if we were of a mind to tie each other up, and we had that headboard, it'd be a bloody disaster, wouldn't it? It wouldn't even work. Yeah, and I think Travis would suss that out, but of course, Miss, Mars Miss Marshmallow 2008 wants us to believe that, you know, <laughs> she was successfully tied up, you know, on a wooden bed, sleigh bed, with a headboard like that. No thanks, love. Sorry, not buying that. Not in a million years. It smells awful. Um... I guess not. If it was well, just... no, you were there and you were the person that was tied up, right? Yes. And so if the rope is already all the way down on the ground, when you get your arm out here, which would be your right arm, and your left arm here, then the rope would just remain there, wouldn't it? If that were the case, but it wasn't. Well, that's how you described it to start with, didn't you? I never talked about the rope touching the ground behind the bed, no. You did what? I never talked about the rope touching the ground behind the bed. So you think now that the rope never touched the bottom of the, the ground then, right? Well, it was pulled taut, so I guess I'd be speculating because I don't have x-ray vision and I didn't look behind the bed, but the rope was tight. So the rope was tight. But if the rope is tight, then that means you can't get your wrists out, right? Because, no. because then you have to hold on. It has to hold on to your wrist. It's now tight, right? No. Stained. You said that your wrists are tight, correct? The rope was tight. Okay, the rope was tight on your wrist, correct? No, the rope was pulled tight. Okay, the rope was pulled tight. Your wrists were covered or circled by this rope, correct? Yes. And they were pulled tight, correct? They, the nooses were loose enough to slip out. Oh. Pardon? The nooses were lo loose enough to slip out of. Right, but you're saying that you were, it was tight, correct? Yes, I was putting pressure on the... So know. if it's 
tight on your wrist if it's pulled taut. I think that's the term that you may have used. Yes. Correct? If it's pulled taut, how is it then that if you can just slip your hand out, that it's still in place? Um, what, the rope is still in place? Right. Well, I don't know what you mean. Well, the point is, it's either loose or it's tight. Which one was it? Is it tight around your wrist so that it creates a situation where it doesn't go down to the ground? Or is it loose around your wrist so that the rope is down on the ground? Which one is it? Um, it was pulled taut and the nooses were wide enough to slip my hands in and out of. That's all I can really say about it. I don't know about ropes and things. I think I know what she's trying to say, but we're just going about it in a back back assward way, aren't we? What she's trying to say is um, she's got them loosely looped around her wrists, but she pulls on like the rope to tighten the rope on her wrists, but she can relax them whenever she wants and free herself. I think that's what she's meaning to say. Um, but unfortunately they're both dancing around each other too much for the real point to be made well i think uh one just might be trying to wear it down maybe yeah maybe that's the strategy um but it is taking a bit of a long time to get a very simple point made and neither of them wants to concede to each other do they no it's way it's a proper battle isn't it oh it's a battle of wits really yeah and while you were in it, and this is why you were tied up, right? Yes. And so where's the rest of the rope? Um, wherever he left it. Okay. Somewhere in that room or the bathroom, I guess. Okay. So you don't know where he left the other rope, right? Um, not offhand. Most people don't have a knife in their um, bedrooms, do they? Well, he doesn't usually, he didn't usually have a knife in his bedroom, correct? Yes, he crossed the street. Oh, world. To my knowledge, that's correct. He never did. Right. And this would be the first time that you ever saw that he had a knife in his bedroom, right? That I saw, yes. And um, so where, where did he cut the rope? Not what on the rope, not where on the rope, but where in he the cut house? He it in the bathroom. So he did it in the bathroom. Did he, he come into the bedroom with the knife or did he leave it in the, be in the bathroom? I don't remember. He, I don't remember where he put the knife when he was done. Do you remember telling Richard Samuels that he actually brought the knife back and left it on the nightstand so that he could cut the rope off of your wrists? I remember speculating about where the knife was left, but I didn't need, he didn't need to cut the rope. You didn't tell Mr. Richard Samuels that the knife was used to cut the rope from your wrist? Uh, not from my wrist, but to cut the rope, yes. And you don't remember that it was on the nightstand, right? I don't remember exactly where it was. Do you remember telling Richard Samuels that when this attack was going on, that you remembered that the knife was near the nightstand and because it had been used to cut the rope? Do you remember anything like that? I remember speculating about that. Well, that, are you sure that you said, I'm speculating that the knife was used to cut the rope? I'm sure I did not say speculating when I was speculating. Well, another classic example of Jody thinking something, but not mentioning it and expecting the whole world to know it without her even letting anybody know about it. Another example. Yeah, but then again, she doesn't even know what she's talking about. No, she doesn't. She's an absolute fruit loop. Let me ask it directly then. Are you saying that the knife was, was used to cut the rope from your wrist or not? Not from my wrist, but to cut it, yes. I understand to cut it. I asked wrist. I from your know. wrist, was the knife used to cut the rope from your wrist? No. Do you remember somebody by the name of Cheryl Carp? Yes. And you discussed the same incident with her, didn't you? Yes, I did. So, again, are you sure that the knife was not necessary to cut the rope from your wrist? I'm sure it wasn't necessary to cut it off of me. And 
not only was it not necessary, that's not what was done, correct? Cut off? Right. That's correct. You slipped your hands out, correct? Yes. And then you continued with the activities of the day, correct? Um, yes. Whatever it was that you guys were going to do, correct? Yes. You keep talking about a movie, and uh, there's an indication perhaps that there's a, a movie that was made, but it wasn't made, if there was one, with Mr. Alexander's camera, correct? I don't, I don't remember which camera we used because mine did movies too. And you, his was kind of new to me, so it was a little bit hard to figure out all of the features on it. Do you so. remember testifying on direct examination about this issue, ma'am? Yes. Do you remember that you specifically told us that you could not use Mr. Alexander's camera to take this video. Do you remember telling us that? I don't remember saying I couldn't. No. Do you remember that you said that it couldn't be done for whatever reason you guys couldn't do it? Objection, Ms. it's her testimony. Oh, well. Now we know in America you guys have funny names for things. For example, we learned that a return check means a check that had actually been cashed. In the UK, a return check means one that's bounced. So... <laughs> Um, we know you guys have funny names for things, right? But Nermi keeps putting this objection through, doesn't he? He does. Um, mischaracterizes her testimony. But Juan Martinez is probably telling the truth about her testimony. So why is Nermi always saying that he's trying to mischaracterize it when he might be telling the truth about her testimony? Well, you've got to understand Nermi's got to try and make it look like he's defending his client. Yeah, but it's... He has um, to put in a few objections i just have a problem with the term because the 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 testimony may not have been mischaracterized that's all but then again i'm picking you know fly shit out of pepper there aren't i yeah thank you <laughs> no i think i was talking about the timer ma'am do you remember let's just take a look at exhibit 167 Remember talking about this particular photograph and saying, I was trying to set up the camera so that we could take a video, but it didn't work because you didn't know how to do it. Do you remember telling us that? Yes, I remember that. So now you remember, right? Yes. Well, you said couldn't. It doesn't mean I couldn't. I just couldn't figure it out. It doesn't mean I couldn't take a video if I didn't sit and try to figure it out. But we were in the mood and didn't want to sit and tinker with it. What are you saying in terms of the camera? Did or you use Mr. Alexander's, did you attempt to use Mr. Alexander's camera to videotape the sexual activity? Yes or no? Yes. Fancy that. A photographer who doesn't know how to work a camera. Yeah, she'd be buggered if she wants to do any weddings or bar mitzvahs, wouldn't she? Remember just now you told me that you didn't? Or that you couldn't remember? That I couldn't. Use his camera. I couldn't remember which camera we ultimately used. So, but do you remember that previously in this hearing, in this trial, you told us that you could remember? Could remember what? What are we talking about again here? We're talking about videotaping the sexual activity in which camera is involved. Do you have any problem understanding that? No. So, do you remember on direct examination that you told us something different than what you're telling us now. Objection, Ms. Character. This is her testimony, Judge. Overall, me. Um, I'm just answering the questions to the best of my memory, so. I'm not asking you if you're ask answering the questions to the best of your memory, am I? Mm, no. I'm asking you whether you have changed your story from testifying earlier to now. That's what I'm asking you. The answer is no. Well then, do you remember testifying that you and Mr. Alexander, when this photograph was taken, were attempting to use his camera to videotape the activity? Do you remember telling us that? I don't remember specifically saying that, but that would be accurate. And you, that's, not, that's something that you didn't tell us previously now. You've now changed that from what you told us couple of minutes ago, right? Testimony, Judge. So, she did change her story then. Yep, he was right. She's so 
disingenuous, isn't she? Oh, God, she is vile. Yeah, she, he basically, you know, shows her up every time. He, you know, how many times have we heard during this test, during this cross-examination, what are we talking about here? What <laughs> are we talking about here? He keeps saying it because he keeps having to snap her back to the point because she's wandering off in a bloody marshmallow garden again, isn't she? Yeah, she's got it there in her head. Yeah, she's a, she's such an arsehole, isn't she? I don't think so. I think it's all consistent. All right. You're just asking different questions. Okay. And then, after doing that, there was a situation where you got up and you got your camera, right? Um, yes. And you say that this camera was used to videotape the activity, correct? Correct. So, where's the rope? Um, at this point, I guess it would be somewhere on the floor. Why would it be on the floor if it's, it was already on the floor to start with? The part that was not used went on the floor to start with, I think. I don't mean to be exploitive about this, but we'll start with uh, this photograph here of Mr. Alexander, 166. Do you see where this is, ma'am? Yes. This is the corner of the bed. Do you see that? Yes. You said that your arms or hands were tied down here. Do you remember telling us that? Um, they were in that general area. Sure. And if the rope is down on the ground, you, you take your hands out, that rope is still going to remain there, right? No. Well, let's take a quick, another view. 168. This is where your hands were, right? Yes. And this is where the rope was, right? Yes. It isn't there, is it? Not anymore. Did you notice that last 20 seconds, her demeanor completely changed? Yeah, she seems uninterested. Yeah, she seems bored at the moment. She was kind of engaged before, but since, you know, like 10 seconds ago, he, and that those three questions that he asked, he introduces this new exhibit or this exhibit that they've already looked at and she just disconnects. Rewind the last 20 seconds and have a look and see if you agree with us. Yeah, it's like she tunes out. Yeah, completely tunes out. Well, you keep saying that anymore. It isn't there at all, is it? It wasn't there when that photo was taken. After this activity, you and uh, Mr. Alexander, according to you, had something to eat, right? Um, yes. And after that, there was sort of a lull in uh, the day's activities, right? Yes. Why didn't you just go home at that point? You said that part, the re part of the reason was just to have sex. That's been accomplished. Why not go home there? Was it the around? only reason? Pardon? Because going there to have sex was not the only reason for going there. Um, what was the other reason? To spend time together. And so you guys are continuing to spend time together, right? Yes. And you want to spend time with somebody that you've described over and over as a bully, right? Um. She's never said that once. Sustained. Judge, may we approach? Okay. Have you? Did you indicate at all during cross examination in any part of? of uh, direct examination that he was a bully. Yes. And so why is it that you want to spend time with somebody that you describe as a bully? A question we have posed more than once in this series, isn't it? Exactly. I mean, why would you spend want to spend time with someone like that? Yeah. She opened opened a big gob. She lied about Travis. She's just about to get owned on that. Oh yeah. He wasn't just a bully, he was many good things also. Or it could be that he wasn't ever a bully, right? Um, that's not the case. So it, no. It could be that that's just what you're saying, right? There's an argumentative world. That's how I felt. And the fact that you felt bullied is your perception of what was going on, right? Yes. So for example, when on, in August of 2007, when he's banging his head, up against the closet door 
and then sort of comes after you and grabs your wrist and hugs you. That's bullying, right? I didn't consider that bullying. So, but again, it's your perception as to what he's doing that constitutes your definition of what bullying is, correct? Yes, when I feel bullied. So after that, you tell us something about going downstairs and you're looking at some CDs or something like that, correct? Yes. And um, with regard to your camera, where did you keep the camera? Um, my Olympus, the one we used. I don't know what the which one it was, you're the one that was there, you had a camera, correct? Yes, I had two cameras with me. Okay, which camera was used to attempt to videotape the sexual activity? Um, the Olympus. And was it successful? Yes, I knew how to use video on that. Pardon? Camera. Yes. And did you guys view it afterwards? Yes. Did you delete it afterwards? Yes. Immediately? Yes. How about the photographs that were taken from his camera? Were they deleted immediately afterwards? Um, to my knowledge, we deleted them afterward, yes. The way you say that, to my knowledge, it means that you're not sure, right? Um, I'm not sure because he did the deleting, I think. So it could be that they weren't deleted right afterwards, right? Could be. And you wouldn't know because you weren't watching what he was doing, right? You were watching what he was doing, but you weren't engaged in the... <laughs> Uh, transaction yourself, correct? That's correct. With regard to that camera and deleting pictures, this was the first exposure that you had to that camera, right? Yes. You hadn't seen that before, right? Um, that's right. And in fact, although you indicated to Detective Flores that you helped them buy this camera, right? Yes. You helped them buy it telephonically, right? Yes. And so the camera that he had before that day, um, before the sexual activity, you had never deleted any images from that camera, right? Prior to June 4th, no. And after the sexual activity, there was photographs that were taken during the activity, correct? Yes. And according to you, after the sexual activity is when he was involved in what you thought was deleting photographs, right? Um. I guess. I mean, I don't really recall at what point they were deleted. I just know they got deleted. Okay, so these photos that um, Travis deleted, that kind of tells me that he didn't want those photos ending up, you know, on the bishop's desk or floating around the internet. Would that be, you know, a fair supposition to make? I think it is. Right. Um so he's quite careful about his reputation, which also leads me to believe, once again, and this has further bolstered my opinion, that he did not know he was being recorded on May the 10th when she recorded that sex call. Um, and if he did think he was being recorded, then he would have to rely on her word that she'd delete it, but somehow I don't think he would take her word as the absolute truth. Yeah, but I don't think he knew he was being recorded. No, I don't. At Not all. at all. And I think that she wanted to use that recording for nefarious purposes. Yeah. Um, to ruin him if, possibly if he didn't take her to Cancun. Or blackmail him. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe that's what this fight was about. Maybe that was brought up and that was, you know, the reason that he was given um, just before she killed him. What you do know is that you didn't do the deleting, right? I don't... I did some deleting on that phone that day with the shower pictures, so well, I don't... I'm not asking about the shower pictures, am I? No. I'm I just asking asked about deleting, about, so I answered. I'm asking about, let's restrict ourselves to the sexual activity for right now, all right? Yes. Involving the sexual activity, you don't know whether or not he deleted those photographs, right? Um, not 100% if he did or I did, I'm pretty sure he did. But you don't know, right? That's correct. And up until that time, that after the sexual activity, you had not deleted any images from his camera, ever, right? Up until that time, no. Right. You went downstairs, right? Yeah. 
Well, I don't know if the photos were deleted before or after, but we did I'm not asking you when the photos were deleted, or the photos were deleted. I'm asking you after you were upstairs, and you just said that you, up to that point, you hadn't deleted anything. After that, you went downstairs, right? Um, well, you make it sound like without deleting anything, we went downstairs. But I don't know if that was the case, if we deleted them before we went downstairs or afterward. But you didn't do any of the deletion, right? You just said you don't, don't know when he deleted them, right? Um, that's right. So you don't know if they were deleted before you went downstairs or at some later time, right? That's correct. And so you then go downstairs because we don't know if the images were deleted yet, right? That's correct. Is that when you took your shower? Mm. I don't know if I ate the banana first or if I took a shower first. Given her voracious sexual appetite, I'm guessing that she ate the banana first, but I'm guessing she did something to it before that. All right, but at some point, before or after the banana, you took a shower? Yes. And... Was he in the bathroom, Mr. Alexander, when you were taking your shower? At one point, yes, and then afterward, no. Okay, and that's the only shower that you took that day, correct? Um, I don't know. Unless you count a water hose at a gas station or pouring a bottle of water over her head. Yeah, I mean, the only shower I would ever give it is a golden shower, but I wouldn't piss on her if she was on fire, to be frank. I'll state my case. Because I have a lot of memory gaps that day. That's the only one I remember taking. So now the memory gaps start, correct? Well, when you when talk you in terms of the whole day, you said that day. I can't Well, I'm that. asking that day after 1.45 in the afternoon, you said you took a shower, right? I don't know what time it was, but we took a shower after sex. I right. did. Take a look at photograph number 165. Recognize that? Yes, I do. What is it? It's um, my um, stuff down there. <coughs> Is it a picture of your rear end, right? Yes. Bear with me, while you guys watch this, I'm just going to go and get some sick bags for me and Shaz. And it does have a time on there, doesn't it? Yes. What's the time on there? 1.44 p.m. So my question to you was, after 1.45 in the afternoon, did you take a shower? Um, yes, after that point, yes. Okay. Not immediately after, necessarily. All right, and after... I don't need a picture of my own ass to know what time I took a shower. And you told us that it was perhaps before or after you ate the banana, right? Yes. And while you were taking a shower, Mr. Alexander was there for a little bit of time, and then he was somewhere else, right? Um, he was in the bathroom at first, and then he left. And you took a shower in the same place where you placed his body after you killed him, right? Yes. And after you took the shower, you got dressed in the pants that you were wearing at the time that you killed him, right? Um, I believe so. When you say you believe so, was there a costume change throughout this whole event? Not that I recall. And... After the shower, where was he? After my shower, he was downstairs in his office. It really surprises me that she could bear to be away from him just to have a shower. Such was her, her obsession with him, you know what I mean? Yeah, she was so obsessed. Dangerously. Yeah. yeah. When she was around him, she didn't want to let him out of her sight. Um, and maybe she took that shower under duress but she knew she really needed it because she would have had a sweaty minge wouldn't she <laughs> but you know it's it's just frightening you know to think of how obsessed with him she was and it was 
it wasn't it was a dangerous obsession it was it was like, it was like um, she owned him you know yeah I mean? but it was a bit like fatal attraction yeah um ex, yeah it's, it's, it's a good analogy it is a good analogy because you know she basically is alex forrest except she's colder and more calculating alex in that film at least had emotion yeah she did but she doesn't and any emotion that she does display she displays for herself okay and then you went down there right yes i did the only reason that you know he was downstairs is because you went down there right yes where was your camera um hmm. i don't know at that point if i had put it in the car or afterward or what i don't know this was uh, june 4th of 2008 right yes um and this was after 1 45 in the afternoon right yes why would you put a camera in a very hot car in in the mesa area where temperatures can go over 105 110 degrees I didn't outside say I, did. I didn't say i did i said i didn't remember no you said that you don't remember but you thought you put it in the car right i said i don't remember if it was still in the house or in the car at that point. all right so at some point you said that you also took your luggage out right yes and your luggage included toiletries and that sort of thing right yes and clothing right so when did you take your items out to the car i don't remember the exact moment or sequence I don't, i'm not asking the exact moment give me an hour period i don't know well what is it after 1 45 it was after that was it before 5 30. um probably i don't recall well the photographs in the shower at 5 30. had you already taken your items downstairs i'm not sure i think but i'm not 100 percent and we suspect this is where all the convenient memory loss starts yeah, don't we the, yeah because we're getting closer to the murder we're getting closer to the murder and conveniently that's when she starts to forget everything we don't buy it do we nah not one bit do you remember when you testified on direct examination regarding this issue yes remember that you told us that by the time the shower was taken you had already put the luggage those items in the car the luggage yes i'm not sure about the camera okay so the luggage did go into the car then right yes but didn't you also tell us that the other bag also went into the car before you were taking these photographs do you the remember backpack, telling us that yes how many bags did you have that day um i had my backpack my carry-on suitcase my purse and my camera case and my laptop okay so your laptop is that going out at the same time that your suitcase is going out or no no because well I had the laptop in the office when I pulled the CDs out. I don't really remember. I know I had it at that point, but I don't remember when it went in the car. Well, it was obviously before 5.30 though, right? Um, the laptop, I don't know, I guess. Well, that's when he was in the shower at 5.30, right? Yes. Okay, and didn't you tell us on direct examination that by that time you had already taken all of your stuff down into the car do you remember telling us that then um i remember saying the luggage and things yes so you don't remember that you told us that the rest of the items were also taken down and put in the car well i don't know about the camera or the I, i'm not asking about the camera i'm t asking about all the other items because the camera you've told me you don't know and then we talked about the laptop remember yes and so i'm asking you when did the other items go down let's keep the camera out of this equation when did the other items go down into the car i don't know why is it that you don't know ma'am they're just details that i don't remember i remember some things and like major things and not i don't know I just, they're details we were warned about this weren't we to be fair <laughs> we was um, all the impertinent details, if you like, of her sex life and of Travis's penis and of, you know, all sorts of shenanigans. Perfect recall. But the actual 
pertinent details that the court needs to know, uh, that Travis's family need to know, nah. Pathetic, isn't it? Well, you've got to remember that whenever it's something that leads up to the murder or anything to do with that, she pretends she can't remember. Yeah, yeah. Do you know something? If you went through something that traumatic, if you like, although I hesitate to use that word with Jodie, but if you go through something, you know, that kind of violent, you will remember every second of it. Of course you would. If you were the perpetrator. Yep. Every little detail. Yeah. This was a ticking time bomb that exploded, unfortunately. Yeah. Why is it that you don't remember the details today, but when you were talking about them within the last couple of weeks, you did remember them? Why is that? That's my point. Well, I was uncertain about those too. I just was, t it, obviously it went in the car at one point. I just don't know exactly which point. But do you remember telling us last week that the luggage and the other items all went down into the car before 5.30. Do you remember telling us that? Um, not that specifically. And, and you don't remember telling us that the camera was included and that it also went down before 5.30. Do you remember telling us that at all? I don't know. Judge, I think give me All right, ladies up. and gentlemen, we're going to take the evening recess. Please be back in a designated area. We can start at 10.15 tomorrow. Is everyone available? All right, we'll see you then. Please remember the admonition. You are excused. Record will show the jury has left the courtroom. Ms. Arias, you may step down. Counsel. Judge, um, yesterday I neglected to move into evidence exhibit number four, 470. I know to do it in front of the jury, but that's the first thing that I'm going to do uh, tomorrow. It's one of the excerpts from the 48 hours, and it's actually excerpt number 15. So I'm going to move it in. It's already been played for the jury. Is that the one that was mistakenly played? No. I don't know what it says. Do you want me to play it right now? But why don't you put it in since we, the jury isn't present? We'll just make sure. Is it your own 15? What's that? It's my 15 right here. And you did play this before, right? Yeah, I think. I'm sure it did. Yeah, that's fine. That's right. Yeah. We don't need to replay it, Judge. I just want to know what it was now that I've got the note, that's fine. You can move it into evidence tomorrow and I will admit it without objection. You said tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow, not today. All right, we're in recess. Thank you. He's slowly wearing her down, isn't he? Slowly but surely. That last kind of half hour of testimony, you could see she was starting to to get really worn down and the the pithy comebacks were stopping and you know she was he's doing his job really well i think it's really good strategy on martinez's part yeah he's wearing her down he's like a boxer he's yeah. making little jabs and he's wearing her down um it's fascinating to watch and admittedly you know i didn't want when the oj simpson trial was on my mum watched every second i didn't this is the first proper trial i've ever watched all the way through yeah m mine too yeah i'm learning so much we both are aren't we yeah um, and he is just a devastating attorney i and wouldn't like him cross-examining me no his style of questioning some people in the comments have said you know he's too brutal but i don't think he can ever be brutal enough with her do you no i mean she's just going da dancing around and trying to you know yeah. interpret other questions yeah i mean we we're not acquainted with alice lavoilette yet are we no um and i'm not sure how we're going to treat her or how harsh we will be on her but 
If she is, as most of you suggest, a Jodie Arias apologist, then we won't have much time for her, will we? No, we won't. Not at all. We hope you've enjoyed doing this. This has been constructed, hasn't it? Many, many sessions. Yeah, many, many, but we finally got it we, finished. We finally got it finished. We've, we have must have sat down to record this, I think, on two hands, the amount of sessions, because there's just been so much that we've had to do. Um, you guys, as we said at the beginning, um, you know, we've got a lot, a lot to thank you guys for. We're not just going to single out our coffee supporters and our YouTube fam. We're going to thank each and every one of you um, that made it possible for us to get our lives back. Yeah, um, we really, really appreciate it. And for, from your guys' point of view, you guys made it possible for us to finish this video and continue to do what we love doing and what you guys love us doing, and that is providing true crime commentary on the Jodie Harris trial. Yeah, and we hope you enjoy this one. Yeah, we hope you have enjoyed it. Um, yeah, we we love doing this. So we are going to be pretty much starting work straight away on part 29, aren't we? Yeah, I can't wait for that. Because this is the day that so many of you have told us about. So we just want to experience it, don't we? And we want you guys to sit with us and experience it. Um, so thanks very much for watching, everybody. We really do appreciate it. Thank you very much, all. Um, and we'll see you for part 29. Um, take care of yourselves, take care of each other. And as we always say, one, one love, love from, from Macclesfield. Macclesfield. Bye. Bye.